Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome you all into this meeting of today that is uh, proclaimed by citizens from Europe, by citizens from Greece. <coughs> we welcome you all today to discuss synergetic models that uh, will allow people to enjoy sustainable energy. All started when we people made a proposition to the European Commission, to the MED uh, program, in order to promote public-private people partnership to reduce energy cost. Some of us in the room speak about abolition, να σταματήσουμε, να μην υπάρχει ενεργειακό κόστος. But this is something that is for the dreamers. This is something that can be uh, a reality uh, if we are getting organized. But then uh, we needed an institutional expression. We needed to have an organization to apply for the European uh, funds that we needed to, to do our job. And so, in 2010, we established European Regional Framework for Cooperation. Europaico Plesio Yatin Periferiaiki Sinergasia. And this was the institution that took uh, the initiative to represent first executive colleagues and friends that we thought that crisis is going to prevail and so we needed to get organized rather than just complaining and uh, objecting uh, of what is happening and so who are these people it's you practically it's it's every of us that we feel that when there is a problem we have to sort this problem we have to be the solution of this problem and in order to do that we have to sit together to get organized and focus on the solution of the problem. As you understand, the language is going to be English, not because we don't love uh, principles that our mother language gave to, to the humanity, but because here we have key international colleagues and friends that are here because they love what we are trying to do in Greece, and they are here to tell us how they managed to reduce energy cost at home. I'm paying something like 300 euro uh, every two months if you multiply how much it is per year. And if you multiply how much it is per year for you, and we had this budget uh, in common, maybe we would have had a very, very good solution when it comes to energy cost. But I'm not the specialist. Uh, Günther Pauli is uh, here and we thank him a lot uh, to, to, to do that. Uh, Dirk Knoppen is here as the cooperative uh, uh, person from Belgium and also from, uh, from Europe to, to do that. And uh, Karel Delvaux is uh, here uh, also uh, that uh, they managed to have one of the most successful examples in uh, Belgium. The meeting today uh, is going to be addressed by uh, Kyriaki as the Secretary General of all Secretary General's Association, uh, Klistenis, of all municipalities in Greece. Uh, I would like also the Mayor of Kozani to, to, to bless uh, the effort that we are going to put together. And uh, following, we are going to have a presentation how they managed in Europe to do it uh, from the three people that I just mentioned and I would like also uh, from Remida project uh, to invite also Vanessa that she's sitting in the back uh, to uh, tell us what is this project and how this project, uh, project is very important. Uh, she's coming from north of uh, Italy. After that we are going to hear the embryonic ta embrya που ξεκινήσανε στην Ελλάδα για να πάνε στην ίδια κατεύθυνση. So the, the municipalities that one way or another 
uh, or people that they started uh, making cooperatives in whatever <laughs> form in order to achieve what uh, we have already achieved in other places outside Greece. I repeat, the objective is that we have twinning arrangements, economies of scale, cooperation uh, with as many from Greece. Don't forget that now uh, people are watching us over the internet, so we have uh, streaming and we would like to, to greet everybody there that is uh, listening. Uh, in a while we are going to communicate also an email address, uh, Theo, and the Skype address so that people that are listening now over the web, they can put questions and so they can participate into, into our discussion. Uh, we are going to publish this on the, on the, on the screen. Uh, Ioannis, this is something that we have to secure uh, for the people attending. And so, uh, in order to cut then the, the long story short, uh, we have here also from the academia and research uh, people that they made the effort to, to arrive in order to safeguard that is possible. What we are discussing is not a dream. It is possible to happen in Greece. And so uh, I greet you from the ex-rector, uh, Mr. Markatos, uh, that we hope to be able to come or uh, not uh, later today. Uh, nevertheless, his colleagues are already here, and so uh, they are going to tell us how it is indeed possible. And uh, we are going to conclude uh, with a discussion on how uh, finally, we have to get organized. If this is step number one today here, what is the next step uh, afterwards? And then I invite you all to be part uh, of that uh, process. And I'm very, very glad that we have young people uh, today here, especially from the social university uh, in Greece. So social engineering is something that uh, really we need to, to perform uh, better. And so very welcome to everybody. I would like Kiriaki then to, to address why it's important and also our mayor before Günther that he was so kind even for hours to be in Greece, to be here, to address the issue uh, from the blue economy uh, point of view. And uh, then uh, I stop this monologue to pass the floor. Kiriaki. Good morning. I represent the Hellenic Association of General Secretaries in municipalities. It's um, an association uh, that started uh, five years ago. We are uh, the persons in the municipalities uh, that do, uh, with, uh, which do the, the hard work. Uh, we are like a, a nut between two hammers because we have the elected uh, um, persons above, and we have all the um, uh, authorities and all the employees um, uh, from the other side. Uh, we created this uh, association because uh, we had to share our know-how and uh, best practices that we implement in our municipalities. Um, we, up to now, we have shared about 100 best practices in uh, all fields of um, uh, the mission of municipalities. And um, I, I have to, to point out that we are the persons that uh, understand the political um, side of uh, local governments, but also uh, uh, legal matters and also administrative matters, and we're trying to make the best connection between these two uh, sides. Um, about uh, um, the, the importance of the energy cost and uh, waste uh, disposals in uh, local uh, uh, communities, I would like to say that uh, technology is uh, running very fast. There are many ideas and uh, many ways to, to use um, these kind of te technologies for um, the best uh, of the societies. But the hardest thing to do is to uh, make public awareness, to make people, local communities, uh, participate and uh, support any initiative. Um, the best way to approach um, local communities is the local governments. Uh, 
And I believe in that. Not in national, not, not so much the national politics or the national um, promotional uh, strategies. Uh, because in Greece we have uh, many islands and every island has its own culture. Uh, populations are different in the way they live and the way they are thinking. Um, you have to respect that, respect it. And one uh, major thing that uh, everyone is, uh, for, for everyone who, who is trying to, to uh, make public awareness is to connect not to, to connect the prosperity and the quality of life these people are going to have and don't stay in cost-benefit analysis. Uh, you know very well that uh, we are uh, in a period very hard for people. Numbers are very tiring. So uh, we need more holistic approaches. We have to be persuaded, we need to be persuaded that a plant or an installation is going to make our life better and the life of our children. Because that's our hope, uh, to make a better life for our children. And this is a different thing to, to do. It's, it's a very difficult thing to do, to persuade people that their life is going to change for, uh, a, a, in a better way. Um, there are many obstacles and you have to keep the whole procedure clean and transparent because the capitals are huge in such investments and uh, we are very suspicious, you know. I may say things that uh, you, everybody has in the, in the backside of uh, its mind, but we, usually we don't talk about them. Um, I was working for the island of Kefalonia uh, for four years and it was a very hard time because we had to adjust to this um, uh, Calicratis uh, program, as you know, but we also had the uh, adjustment for the public finance and all this difficult uh, crisis uh, period. Uh, we also had the, er the earthquakes, as you know, but we managed very well and uh, we have pro proven that uh, uh, everything is up to people. People made uh, this island stand in his, its feet again. So uh, numbers are persuasive, numbers are uh, important, but uh, you have to give a um, small vision for people and communities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kyriaki. Uh, a very, very short blessing from our uh, mayor, from uh, Kozani. As you all know, Kozani ke energia ke lignitis in a, uh, an issue, very important issue in Greece. Dear mayor. Θα με συγχωρέσετε που θα μιλήσω στα ελληνικά. You would excuse me. Ε, μου είναι λίγο πιο δύσκολο, δεν θέλω να εκτεθώ στα αγγλικά μου, να μου το συγχωρέσετε. You will express better like that. Ε, λοιπόν, έρχομαι από την Κοζάνη. Η Κοζάνη, για όσους είναι μακριά από εδώ, είναι μια περιοχή στην Βορειοδυτική Ελλάδα, γύρω στα 500 χιλιόμετρα από την Αθήνα και παράγει περίπου το 50% της ηλεκτρικής ενέργειας της χώρας. So 50% of electric energy in Greece is produced due to Κοζάνη. Ε, κύριο καύσιμο είναι ο Λιγνίτης, ε, όπου... Αυτό έχει σαν πλεονέκτημα ότι δίνει ενέργεια στη χώρα, αλλά παράλληλα έχει δημιουργήσει πολύ σημαντικές συνέπειες σε τοπικό επίπεδο, στο περιβάλλον, αλλά και στην κοινωνία και κατ' επέκταση και στην οικονομία της περιοχής. And so while this is very important for the energy of every each of us, at the same time the economy or the ecology of Kozani is degraded. Είναι πολύ σημαντικό για μας αυτή την περίοδο να σχεδιάσουμε ένα πλάνο μετάβασης σε μια άλλη οικονομία. So you have to plan uh, the next step to new type of economy. Θέλουμε να στηρίζετε στην καθαρή ενέργεια, στην εξοικονόμηση ενέργειας, στο καθαρότερο περιβάλλον και στο βιωσιμότερο περιβάλλον για όλους. 
So clean environment and sustainable uh, environment is our objective now. Uh, με αφορμή και τη σημερινή εκδήλωση όπου έρχονται να ενωθούν η κοινωνία με την παραγωγή ενέργειας, γιατί αυτό είναι το ζητούμενο πώς οι πολίτες θα εμπλακούν σε όλη αυτή την ιστορία, είναι πολύ σημαντικό για μας να δούμε πώς μπορεί να γίνει αυτό. So the model next for us is to be discovered and to be justified and we welcome every discussion for that. Γιατί δυστυχώς, για να πούμε και μια πικρή αλήθεια, και στο κομμάτι της κοινωνικής συμμετοχής η χώρα μας έχει έλλειμμα, αλλά και στο κομμάτι της παραγωγής ενέργειας, της καθαρής παραγωγής ενέργειας, έχει εξίσου έλλειμμα, αν και έχει τις προϋποθέσεις να παράγει πολύ και καθαρής ποιότητας ενέργειας με τοπικούς πόρους, όπως είναι ο αέρας, ο ήλιος. And so we have a potential surplus in energy production due to sun, due to all these conditions in Greece. At the same time, social integration is also a big, a big question and whether we have achieved the social understanding. Of the type. Εγώ να χαιρετήσω την εκδήλωση, να ευχαριστήσω για την πρόσκληση και να πω ότι πολλούς από εσά ελπίζω να τα ξαναπούμε και στο μέλλον. So, welcome, blessings and open discussion from now to the future. So, we would like to thank, uh, to thank the mayor of uh, Kozani. Uh, indeed, we feel all. Uh, I don't know if some of you passed from the, from the area. I did. And I feel very, very much, I mean, looking at the sky of Kozani now, what's happening out there. And uh, so his people must be, you know, uh, supported to, to overpass this uh, situation. Gunther, thank you very, very much for making sure to be here. Uh, the man that is introducing blue economy, while we were talking about green uh, economy, he is going to talk about the blue economy, starting out of Tokyo, Uh, where he is residing uh, at the moment, teaching in to several universities around the earth. Uh, I prefer not to talk to, I prefer to listen. That's very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And, and first of all, my apologies. I'm flying in and flying out. But uh, with a great insistence and the invitation, I decided to take on the challenge and be here. At this very moment, I'm dedicated to a program in Johannesburg, South Africa, to generate 100,000 jobs in six months' time. I've no time to waste. You should think the same way. And we have already done more than 100,000 jobs in the five months, in the two weeks that we're working. I would like you to know that if you want a new business model, a new economic model, it is working. But you have to get, exactly as the mayor was saying, beyond the models that are there today. It's not about austerity, it's not about just spending, it's about redirecting the logic of what we can do with available resources. And just to, for you to get an idea, this is my son. At the age of three years old, my son is farming his own mushrooms. Why? Because his mom is Colombian and she drinks a lot of coffee. And we use the waste coffee, the spend from the coffee, and we use uh, our organic uh, fibrous waste because it all has been prepared and cooked, that means that we can do with an 80% energy efficiency compared to any other farmer of mushrooms because it has already been sterilized by drinking the coffee and pouring the hot water in it. Now, that's the level of logic I'm going for. That means we're out-competing whoever is in the world market. We even out-compete the Chinese. And it's my son of three. This is my rise to fame in Belgium in 19... 91, I created the first ecological factory that was zero emissions. No heat required additionally. I was producing soap. Soap is an exothermic reaction. The exothermic reaction was inside a factory, and I created a green cap on top of it so that the heat would get trapped into the building. It was not CNN primetime news. It was a rather famous initiative. But I was making soaps, but the soaps required palm oil, And I realized when I was in Indonesia, I was destroying the habitat of the orangutan. And as a result, I got out of the business. And that is when I sold everything and started dedicating myself to go beyond what is called renewable, biodegradable stuff. I mean, let's just put it to the side. In the end of the day, it is very much like was said by the two people who introduced. We need to generate the jobs. We need to respond to people's needs. And it's not just the numbers, and it's not just sustainability. We have to go beyond it. 
I summarized 100 initiatives in a book called The Blue Economy. Today we have 188 projects implemented, 4 billion euro mobilized, 3 million jobs generated. And why? Because we're obsessed by generational jobs. And we're obsessed by outcompeting what is there today. And I can only tell you, it's easy to outcompete what is there today. And this is the big shift in our thinking, because we don't have the confidence. I'm a European, I've left Europe 21 years ago. And my base is in Japan. I do a lot of work in Latin America. I do a lot of work in Africa. But to me, it is very important that we remember that we need a lot of great people who can inspire us. We need mentors. We need people who have changed the rules of the game. And my work with my foundation, that's in 34 countries today, our work is to change the rules of the game. You remember David against Goliath? Who won? David. Why did David win? Because he changed the rules of the game without telling Goliath. And that's what we have to do. Now I put my honor to the person there in the black, in the black and white picture on the top, George P. Livanos. Who remembers George P. Livanos? You Greeks, you're too young. You don't remember anymore. He created in 1984 as part of it the Hellenic Marine Protection Environment Agency. I've been involved in Greece a little bit before. So in the 80s, I was already here talking to your big shipping magnets in order to get environmentalism into the ships and self-regulate. Now, I've been working for so many years for the green economy. I don't believe in the green economy anymore. Not because I'm against the green economy. We have to do better than the green economy. I mean, what is it with this green economy where everything is good for you and for your health and for the environment is more expensive? And therefore you subsidize it. It doesn't make sense anymore. This made sense in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, not with the logic we have today. So my blue economy is really a focus on use what you have. Focus on available resources, transform them into higher value, and we do something that most economists and definitely all MBAs think is impossible. We increase productivity and generate jobs. We have this incredible obsession today to cut jobs everywhere. It's ridiculous. How do you tolerate that? How much longer are you willing to tolerate it? Because the economic model that we will show, and I will show the cases, allows us to really come to a new growth strategy. And the growth strategy, and I'm going to go through this rather quickly, is that we have to reindustrialize and we reconnect the primary sector with industry. That's how we operate everywhere. Is it in South Africa? We do it. Is it in El Hierro, in Spain? We do it. If it is in Sardinia, who is here from Italy? Vanessa. Vanessa. Oh, yeah, but she's close to Slovenia. Not so close to... Uh, but we are very keen on securing that we have the focus on value adding, not cost cutting. If you want to do nothing but cost cutting, join the multinationals and then pay no taxes in Europe. But if you are focusing on generating value added, then you can change the economy around. And let's go to El, El Hierro. El, 17 years of work. And I don't have a lot of time to go into detail, but after 17 years of work, El Hierro is the first island in the world that is self-sufficient in energy and water. The first one. And we don't burn anything. Every resource has to be used first to produce food, not to burn. And as a result, this project that initiated from these beautiful mountains of 1,500 meter altitude for a population of only 10,500 people. We raised 83 million euro and we were told we were nuts to even propose 83 million euro. There goes another white elephant in Spain, we were told. There are many in Spain, these white elephants. No, that's Calatrava, that's something else. We're not Calatrava. We're not Valencia. We're focusing on what? And our analysis in 1996 was very simple. The island is spending 8 million euro per year on import of fuel. My conclusion is then you have an 80 million euro budget. Simple as that. Because if you're wasting your money to the Arabs, with all due respect to my Arabic friends, 
But when you waste your money on, on fuel, then you can invest it into your own energy system. And the investment was done. It took a lot of challenges. But if we were only to have focused on the energy, it would not have worked. And as a result, we focused on water and energy. Because really, the challenge on the island was water, energy, and jobs. I'm happy to say that today, El Hierro has the lowest 5% unemployment in the whole of Spain. Would you like to listen to that story? And it's because we didn't focus on energy only. It was water and energy. And yes, it is a system whereby we're using wind energy, five area generators. It's 11.7 megawatt capacity. And the most important is the change of the business model. The business model is that in the first place, electricity is generated and put into the grid and paid for. Second, excess energy is used to pump the water up so that when there is no wind that you can do the hydro. Third, whatever is left over is used to do desalination. Ah, that's interesting. Now we desalinize the water at marginal costs. And what is the result? The island has doubled the amount of water at half the cost. What do you now have? You can reopen your slaughterhouse. You can have your yogurt factory. You can have your cheese factory. You have your ice cream factory. You can start irrigating for your bananas. And the island grows self-sufficient in food. And all that money that was flown out of the island stays on the island. And no one suffers from any stress except from the fact that now we need to immigrate to the island because there are not enough workers. Have you heard of that lately? Have you heard of that? But it was because the combination of water and electricity. Now, Endesa has 30% of the capital and manages the electric system. The local population today owns 60% of the system. 60% owned by the local population, 10% by the province. And we were able to tell the government, eliminate your subsidies. What a free market system is that? We don't need the subsidies anymore. And that is where we've been able to move on and we've been able to implement this. This is the hero, Un Ereño. He's from El Hierro, Juan Manuel Quintero, the technician. No one believed that he was going to run it. He's running it. He should be hired by all of you because he knows how to turn an island self-sufficient in energy and water and grow the economy. But he's an engineer. And it doesn't do the business models with all the numbers, as usual. He is passionate about his island, and he really wants to make it possible. Twice the water, half the price. Renewable only. We've got an expansion of organic agriculture. Sustainable finishes. Scientific tourism. There are 60 people arriving every day to learn how this works. And, you know, people who come to learn, they don't go with cheap planes. They don't have Airbnb. They go with what is available. Now, to me, it is very important that it's an island with a future. Now, let me jump you to another project, because I want to inspire you and see what is possible. Here we are in Colombia, my adopted country. That is the land that we found deforestated by the Spaniards 200 years ago, 250 years ago, to introduce cattle farming. We don't talk about it anymore. We now talk about the Amazon. So instead of looking at this, we said we will regenerate the rainforest. And we were told to be nuts. The red photos by NASA is a regenerated rainforest. Now what happens when you regenerate a rainforest? When you regenerate this rainforest, then you are having water again, filtered water. But if you have a filtered water and you have, again, a drop of about one meter, you have electricity. 35 years ago, we started planning for the energy independence of this zone with the one meter drop hydropower stations. We have it. We have the whole region, which is again about 15,000 people, self-sufficient in water and in energy. And we use the hydro. But then we're using the mycorrhizal fungi, we're planting the trees, and we're tapping the trees. And the tapping of the trees, we process locally. We were told we would never compete against anyone with a local factory. Bullshit! Why 
why do we want to believe that everything has to be globalized and competitive and large scale and economies? That is history, but we believe it. Now, this is our facility. We produce our own fuel. We're the only region in the world that produces its own fuel from the trees. It's the turpentine. So we process the resin from the tree. We extract the colophon, which is for the paint industry. We outcompete the Chinese imports into Colombia because we have an additional product, which is turpentine. And we're the only ones who use turpentine to fuel both the diesel engine and a gasoline engine. We don't accept what is there. Change the rules of the game. That is our motto. And that means that we have one fuel turpentine which we use for both diesel engines, tractors, for motorbikes, for everything. How much money do you think you make when you comply, supply your own fuel? We lift that community in Colombia. It's the only community in Colombia that's full employment. And it's the only community in the world that produces its own fuel from the trees. How many more can follow? You want jobs? You want full employment? Start by substituting the fuel. And this is part of the message that I want to share with you. And we do it locally. And this is the man who's leading it, Paolo Lugari. Paolo has been headed for all the time. And here is our biodiesel. You know, I'm going to have to admit to something. It says biodiesel. It's not biodiesel. It's turpentine. But what's the problem? There's no standard for turpentine using in cars. And if you want to do it, then you spend two, three years to get a standard approved. So what we do, we call it biodiesel and move on. Sometimes it's got to be pragmatic in life. Because in the meantime, we are securing that the generation of refugees in one generation moves to middle class. That's my goal. Am I a communist? Am I a Che Guevara? Who am I? Or do we want results on the ground? And I think this is what we're missing. Now, we have a policy that water is to be for free. So I liked your playing with the words, should the LHG be for free and maybe they're dreaming. Well, if you're doing water and energy, we supply in all our influence zone, three liters of drinking water for free to everyone. Because water is life, should be for free. Now it does cost money, but we make so much money on that fuel, we can give it for free. This is not corporate social responsibility. This is just a commitment to the community. And what is the result? Everyone who is six years old in that region receives from us a bicycle for free. Now what happens when everyone rides the bicycle and drinks three liters of water? The result is very clear. You have to close your hospital because of lack of patience. You don't have patience anymore. Everyone moves and everyone drinks water. I don't have to add, there is no Coca-Cola available in our sites. There is no cow's milk with hormones either. Are we obsessed? Are we clear? No, health is a priority. Happiness is a priority. Making certain that people can respond to their basic needs with what they have. Use the natural systems. You as Greeks, you have incredible natural systems. Go with nature. Use your natural resources and you will be able to make a tremendous difference. Use a resource that's abundant. Have you seen this in Greece? This is a thistle. You have it. It's a Mediterranean plant. Whenever you don't farm the land anymore, you get thistles. Now, this was the basis of our reconversion of a petrochemical facility. I'm going to give you the numbers. E&I, ENI, maybe known by you as Ajib. E&I used to import 2 million tons of petroleum to generate 700,000 tons of chemicals. That's the efficiency of a petrochemical plant. Today, we're producing elastomers, herbicides, lubricants. We're producing <coughs> polymers, all from the fistle. The fistle, which was considered a weed, which we buy chemicals for to kill. You know, that's the logic we have. Now, we use that. And, our way, and today, I'm happy to say that Lavazza, all the Lavazza capsules for coffee are now made from fistle chemistry, fistles. It's not corn that is being diverted to make into a bioplastic. We're using it from fistles. Now, 
Our waste product from our thistles is animal feed. We can supply local goat farmers animal feed at 250 euro a ton instead of the soy at 600 a ton. The GMO stuff we're getting from Brazil or from America or we're supposed to get for free. And then we have the little dust on the thistle flower, which is a bacterial enzyme which we use to make cheese. We got six cash flows from a thistle. We've generated 2,500 jobs on the island of Sardinia, and they were told there was no future for Sardinia. And then, this is the old petrochemical facility, which we have converted into a biorefinery. Where are your petrochemical facilities in Greece? How competitive are they? Are you ready to turn it around? Because the energy efficiency goes from 2 million tons of petroleum and 700,000 tons of chemicals to 360,000 tons of chemicals, but all from thistles, which are perennial plants, which are Mediterranean, which you cut and they grow again. I mean, can it get easier? And people say, oh, but the petroleum price is going down. I don't care. Because the thistles are for free. I don't have to irrigate. I don't have to put herbicides. I don't have to put pesticides. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to have tankers to ship it around. I just harvest and process. Could we as Europeans wake up and see what we have? Instead of being lost in the numbers. I mean, we should get it out of the numbers. Thanks to the policies of Matteo Renzi. Matteo... We have a very clear understanding with the, the Prime Minister. Seven petrochemical facilities by the end of this year will be transformed to biorefineries. Seven. We will be the biggest employer in chemistry in Italy. I'm the chairman of the company. This is transforming Europe. But we need a government that's ready to do it. Is your government ready to do it? I don't know. I know they're ready to talk to the Germans. But what I think is important is, are we ready to go beyond what is the obvious? And so we have to create sometimes things we didn't even imagine. <coughs> that investment was a 540 million euro investment. The funding was mobilized in three weeks time. Why? Why can you raise 500 million euros for this? For the very simple reason, if they had closed it down and had to clean up everything, it would have cost them a billion euro. So who were getting off the hook? E and I and the Italian government and the insurance companies, of course, like München and And we look at how can we package these elements because the energy efficiency is tremendous, but the job generation comes along with it. And this is what we think is important. Increase efficiency. This is the last case I'm mentioning. I have hundreds of cases. But this is a technology for solar. You know where we developed it? In Sweden. I mean, why do you want to go to the solar richest country in the world in order to test solar? Why don't you go to the solar poorest? And if you make it work in Sweden, can you make it work in Greece? I think we would all agree, yes. Now, this technology works in Sweden. It's a photovoltaic cell sandwiched in capillary pipes. So eight capillary pipes will keep the temperature of the PV always at 50 degrees Celsius, when you have the maximum generation of electricity. Why haven't we doing it? Why do we call car engines and not PVs? Why do we only use one side of the PV and not both? Can you imagine all PV you install, you use one side, not both sides? Why not? Oh, says the engineers, because it gets too hot. Oh, cool it. No, no, then you use too much material. Yeah, maybe you use more material, but we we'll generate seven times more power and energy. Seven times. And then you have all these European programs with energy efficiency and on PV efficiency increases. Would you like to waste your money in a better way? This is the reality. That's the traditional PV panel. The yellow. 18% more power because you cool it. Then you generate the heat. And guess what? Solar panels work at night. You think I'm a joker? No, because black during the day absorbs heat. Black at night releases the heat. That means our capillary pipes at night have water of 6 degrees Celsius, with which you can do your air conditioning during the day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how things really work in nature.
Can we just get a bit more creative? Do you want to have this industry, this solar industry here in Greece, or you continue to import the cheap stuff from China? November in Sweden. It works in November in Sweden. Everyone has hot water and power in Sweden in November. This is, to me, the challenges that we have to look at. I, I don't have the time to go into a lot more detail, but I wanted to give you a flavor of how I think and how I operate. I'm a nuisance for many people. I'm a big nuisance. But we want things to happen on the ground. We want the jobs to be generated. We want your entrepreneurs to wake up. We want the new business models to emerge. And we've been able to do this much better than we ever thought before. The framework for the frame that is used for these solar panels from Sweden are frames that use heat resistant plastics we recycle from the waste dumps. So we generate another little job angle there. We will not spare one little reflection in order to generate the extra job. We are missing the jobs. And that's where the greatest energy is. Now we're producing these ovens, these bakery ovens for South Africa. People say, how did you get 100,000 jobs? Well, I'll give you 15,000 of the jobs. Instead of having one industrial bakery supply bread to 2 million people who survive on a dollar a day, we're creating 5,000 bakeries. But 5,000 bakeries that solely work on solar energy. And we're not doing this with 12 volt uh, DC or 350 DC or AC. We're just heating up the oil. If you're in South Africa, you just heat up the oil. That means during the day you go 300 degrees Celsius, at night you're 200 degrees Celsius. You have now an oven that works 24 hours a day. What else can you do? Only bread? No. You can start to do many other things. And now you have an oven that is not only producing heat, but is also producing power. So our street lights are connected to that. Our mobile phone chargers uh, are connected to that, etc., etc., etc. We create 5,000 hubs. That's good for 15,000 jobs. What we need to do is a decision to do it. We need a clarity to do it. And people say, but gosh, that's going to require 40 million investment. Who's going to put up the 40 million? Well, the poor people of South Africa today are spending 370 million on buying junk bread. Because that's the value of the market. Now, if you can spend 370 million on buying bread that is bad for your health, then we can get 40 million in order for people to generate the bread themselves in their own ovens without the need for electricity. And there is no money from aid, not from anyone. And we don't care because we're not going to wait till they finally wake up and realize that there is another oven possible. And there is on solar, it is also to be done. And we have one focus, just do it. I conclude. Most of the things I talk about for many people sounds like fantasy. So therefore, my main audience is children. Children from three years on. I write fables. I write children's stories. Because when you tell children that, uh, you know, these solar panels work at night for the children, this is, of course, they work at night. Whereas if you stand in front of an audience of scientists, engineers, and say, this man is nuts. He may say he has a PhD, but certainly not an engineering PhD. Because we know that this is not possible. The beauty of children is they don't make any difference between fantasy and reality. Everything is reality. And what we're in need of transforming the economy, we're in need of having people who think that it's all fantasy, but we're going to turn it into reality. That's, to me, the only way to go forward. What we do in our work, wherever we work, in any community we work, we will set the targets, we'll have the strategies, but we will always inspire the children. I am a father of six. My youngest is one, my eldest is 28. And to me, it's impossible to transform a society unless you give it to your children and you give it to the kids so that they can all jointly imagine things that, as Nelson Mandela said, seemed impossible until it's done. I'm so sorry. This was really actually a fantastic call. I mean, I was just, I just checking who's calling, but uh, I didn't know. I would like to wish you success with your meeting.
And I, I accepted to come here because if you look at a European corporation, if you look at your islands, if you want to come, come to El Hierro. Let's see. Let's see what happened in El Hierro. And in the end of the day, that's what we need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I apologize again that I have to go on. I cannot stay with you, but in the audience, they know how to get a hold of me and write me. And let me know how you want to follow up and do things. We don't do analysis. We don't write business plans. In our organization, it's forbidden to write a business plan. It's forbidden to do the numbers. The numbers must be summarized on an A4 page, not more, by hand. And if it's not convincing enough, don't do it. For the rest, we need to speak to the heart. We need to speak to the mind. We need to make certain that people agree that this is a transformation we want to do. Thank you very much. Uh, five minutes of questions, if you have any. Because he has to fly, Gunther, and is not going to stay with us. Uh, if there is anything that uh, already results from the dream that he put us into uh, reality, uh, we can uh, we can speak to him now. So, Mr. Dervo, Karel, and also from coming from from locality of uh, project in Greece, right? Okay, we will give you priority, Greece. Uh, are there anybody else? Okay, so it's only two questions then you are going to have. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm Karel Davo from Ecopower from Belgium. Um, very inspiring uh, presentation. Thank you very much. You got many ideas. Um, <clears throat> so that worked already. My question is you're always talking about we. We? Is that the blue economy company or okay. cooperative? Or We're what not is it? Very good, thank you. We is sometimes the polite form of I. We don't write fables, I write the fables, but I say perhaps we, so we sometimes. We is 34 organizations around the world related to what is called ZERI, Zero Emissions Research and Initiatives. This was created in 1994 at the invitation of the Japanese government in preparation for the Kyoto Protocol. I was invited in 94 to come to Japan and assist the Japanese government to imagine what would a business model, a competitive business model look like if we have zero emissions, if we have zero waste. I had four people in the audience, no one was interested. I mean, hey, there was Al Gore, what would I do with Al Gore is there? So as a result, no one was interested in my proposals in 97. And that's when we created the Ziri foundations around the world, which are dedicated to the implementation of projects. We have one focus, implementation. The we is very important as well, is that we have a network of about 3,000 scientists who continuously contribute in order for us to double check the science and have clarity on the science. Is it possible now, not in five years, now? And so that we have our scientific network that confirms or tells us you're off track. And if they say I'm off track, I will most of the time listen to them. That's the we. Okay, next question. Your identity, please, louder so okay. that everybody can so, meet each other here. My name is Nikos. We have started a startup called Project Locality here in Greece. And uh, we're trying to work with uh, local small communities. Um, actually, it's one word question, and it's a it's a huge problem here in Greece. Uh, so I want to hear a story. One word, bureaucracy. So bureaucracy, when, whenever we engage, we engage with the government in order to eliminate the bureaucracy wherever possible. I'll give you a concrete example. When you have 29 projects you want to implement, like we're doing in the city of Johannesburg, you can imagine the bureaucracy is a problem. Because you need permits, you need tenders, you need specifications, etc. So one of the agreements is with the city, before we start, is that no tenders. We will not go through tender process. It's corrupt, it doesn't work, and it's always too expensive. And if you have a few monopolies anyway, why do you ever want to do it? That's not the right argument. The right argument is that what we're saying is that we will secure total transparency of where all the value is generated in the process 
And thanks to the total transparency, we will have an agreement with the investors who will say to us, how much is enough? Is a 15% return enough now? Or are you insisting covertly on your 60% returns? Like hedge funds always will look for. And so therefore what we're doing is we have an agreement transparent on how much is enough, what internal rates of return do we accept on things like a solar oven with these panels. And once we have an agreement on that, we allocate it directly. Because we know if we want to look for a competitor, it's going to take us two, three years. In the meantime, what is happening to all the people? So that is one thing. The second thing is that with many of the governments, we want them to change the payment system. If you want to grow the economy, money must circulate faster. Now, if you have to send it to a bank, the bank already sits there for three days. So we eliminate the banks. We create our bitcoins, we create our M-Pesas, we create our own currencies. Why? Because if the bread is delivered to the local clinic, within 10 minutes after delivery, the person who gave the bread has the money on his cell phone or her cell phone. And of course, that requires an agreement with the bureaucracy. Actually, it is elimination of the bureaucracy and elimination of the corruption because we know all too well that these invoices, in order to get them paid a bit faster, you've got to give money underneath. So we don't want it anymore. So these are two. I have hundreds of practical solutions that we say. Now, if the government locally is not ready to do that, we are not working there. And we behave like the Germans. You know, like Merkel. This is the way you do it or out. Well, we do the same. You want a positive? This is the way. Because we can't get bureaucracy in between. People are suffering. Unemployment is way too high. Food and energy and water has to be produced much cheaper than we do today. And we will outcompete the Chinese wherever we can. And that needs to be done with another administrative approach. And so that's part of our exercise. Thank you. Well, I don't know what you think, but uh, I think that Gunther uh, set the ball already in a, in a very, very nice uh, way for all of us. And uh, I don't want to, to, to intervene at that uh, stage. Just remember that in the file, what you have, there is a, an A4 uh, page that is asking you your opinion what are the strong and weak points? What are the opportunities and the weaknesses of public, private, and people? And so if we are all going to work together after this uh, congregation here, then uh, we should uh, have uh, your opinion on that. We would like to collect that together with your address that we already have uh, outside. So now I ask uh, Dirk Knappen, that uh, has invested already uh, a great part of his enthusiasm and of his uh, systematic uh, uh, work as uh, uh, the RES cooperatives, renewable energy sources, the ananeosimes to Velgiu, Lipon, at cooperative uh, level. And, vevea, uh, because uh, Dirk is uh, working very close to the European institutions, to the European uh, Convenant of Mayors, and uh, uh, so he understands also the policy issues on the back. But he is here especially because when I met him in uh, Sivnos, uh, Madame Calamara, that we have the island of Sivnos is here, the island of Creta is here. Creta, where are you? Here, so that you can refer to, to them. The island of Kefalonia is here already. So uh, anybody else that comes from uh, the municipalities, please, uh, be sure to, to, to know that uh, you are here because uh, actually when we talk public-private people partnership, Dirk, what is that? Well, it's working, it's working together and I think uh, we try to, um, as, as RESCOPS, we try to support people locally to, uh, to work together, to cooperate um, and we try to involve everybody in, uh, in the whole process. Now, I'm not the eloquent speaker that uh, Günther Pauli is, and I don't have the 
technical background either. Um, there's a, I'm also a, a bit of a figure cruncher, so you are going to be seeing some figures also. Um, but what I try to what I try to bring to to you, what I try to bring to you is. Um, don't let yourself be blocked by the barriers you have in your mind. Um, I often say, take them out, put them in front of you in a stack, and then give yourself the chance to think freely, and then you will be able to do what Günther Pauli was explaining, find solutions that nobody would, would ever think of, um, and then go against the, the barriers that you may may find, and then you, you find a way to overcome the bureaucracy. Um, well, this is a bit of the, the list of what I was going to do, introduction of, of what, what is going on. It's, it's a, more of a, a framework of where we are working. Common and public goods for the benefit of local communities, renewable energy supporting uh, the communities, a sustainable energy system getting started as a locally, and then more information, which I'm probably going to uh, leave, but then you know that uh, it is available. I'm a product developer. I uh, went in Denmark in '97 for uh, to study in a in a renewable energy center. Um, I've been organizing tours to show people how far you can get. Um, by now, the the uh, peninsula that we were working we were visiting is a 100% green electricity peninsula and 85% green heat uh, peninsula. So that's uh, what can be done already today. Working for RESCO, which is a federation of groups and cooperatives of, of citizens for renewable energy. Cooperatives are groups of people working together to solve their own uh, problems um, and in a, in a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. We see cooperatives as a third way in between uh, purely public and purely private, um, in between the large scale and the very individual, and I'm going to come back on that because that's important. Um, and then in between the 1% return you get on your savings and, and the investor uh, return on investments asked uh, 30 to 50 or 100%. Um, we are in a, involved in a number of projects. I'm going to go to pass these because it's uh, something Carol Dervo is going to talk about later on. Um, one thing I want to, to mention, especially because there's so many young people here, is a, a network we are starting up, a sustainable energy youth network, uh, where we try to involve young people into the sustainable energy uh, developments. Right now, we are in a world of, of suffering in a certain way. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, no, hardly anyone had these. By now, every second African has one like this. They know by now how we distribute resources, how we use uh, things, and how we share. Um, so we, what we see is we are entering and we are realizing that we have an ecological problem, that we have a social problem, and that we have an economical problem in the unfair distribution of things. We had Earth Overshoot Day on the 19th of August last year. That means your weekly wage is finished by Thursday. You don't have the Saturday and the Friday and the Saturday. So thinking that we can grow out of the crisis the way we do right now is impossible. Um, we can only work with things that are based on the sun. And then I'm talking about growing organic food, using renewable energy, and harvesting materials. You have heard quite a lot of that from uh, Hünder Pauli. Um, this is a, an organization where they do exactly that. Grow organic food, uh, use materials, natural materials, and use uh, renewable energy all in one social enterprise in the north of France. Um, we were talking about common and public goods, and what, what's happening here, here in Greece is that the outsiders are forcing you to let go of what you have as resources. The common goods is the, the water, the wind, the beaches, the land, whatever you have here as natural resources. Uh, that's something valuable and worth to keep here in your own, in, in your own control. 
And then there's the public goods, that's the things that we have paid for, all, all of you have paid for, the infrastructure, say. Uh, also something, it's, be, it's better to keep that as, as your own and to, to be in control, so citizens should claim them. Here in Greece, a number of groups are already doing that. They don't let go of what, what they have, uh, the 136 movement in, in Thessaloniki, keeping the water under control of the citizens and not under control of outsiders. That's one of the examples. There are a number of others here in Greece. Um, what we can do with common and public goods is you can um, turn whatever resistance there is, you can turn into into positive energy because people people can then control what what they do what when you see that people resist uh, the construction of wind turbines it's often because they have no control of what's happening they see money flowing out of their community just as it did before they see some some external investor coming in and and uh, taking the money what we can do is with with renewables is harvesting values and i'm using harvesting because then you have to invest something, you have to do something. Um, but then you can also uh, collect a number of values. You can collect 90 euros per inhabitant per month. That's something. But the other things are uh, employment, as Günther Pauli said, peace, solidarity, security of supply, stability in the prices. So that's what you can gain. This is a, an example of how in Denmark people take things in their own hands lo very locally. This is uh, um, the, the, the biggest uh, housing building in, in, uh, in Denmark. In, the, in 2009, when the, when the climate conference was happening in Copenhagen, they were going to put up a PV plant on the south facade. They were going to put up um, uh, a uh, uh, solar collector, a uh, thermal collector on the roof. What was happening? The, the, the inhabitants of the building had to decide about the PV plant. The inhabitants of the neighborhood had to decide about the solar plant because that was going to inject in the di district heating uh, system. So you see layers of democracy building up. They were building uh, three wind turbines in the harbor. The community took one of the three as a cooperative and, and is now operating it as a cooperative. So it's you see small layers of how we, we decide ourselves as people. Um, these are a number uh, of figures. What is important here is that, that we see that the amount of energy we have available is such that for, for Europe we need half a percent of, not even, of what the solar is, is giving us to cover all of our energy consumption. What I'm showing here is also that um, for the for the, the price of CO2 is f far lower than the price we spend on the fossil fuels for the to emit the CO2. That means that if we can do uh, we can produce the energy locally, we we keep that money in our own communities, and you see how how much it it can be. Here in Greece too, you have a, a, an enormous potential, and, and this is a solar irradiation to show what's, what is possible. In reality, what you can do is you need here in Greece not even 0.2% of the energy uh, that is available. What I wanted to, to gi uh, give you also is that you used to have uh, 3 billion um, en uh, million euros a year in, in energy bill. What you have now is somewhere between 8 and, and 11. So that means that your economy has to produce eight, 5 to 8 billion euros extra. That's the sort of the shortages you have in your budget. So that's where you could, capturing energy could, keep, could, could prevent you from having the shortages in your budget. Often people are saying renewables energy are too expensive. This is what's happening in Germany. By now, they are at 30 euros per megawatt hour. Um, you see constant drop in the prices. In Germany and in, in uh, Scandinavia, electricity is now cheaper than crude oil. So they, they, they are, are uh, sort of supporting electric vehicles because they, they 
um, use uh, no, no petrol anymore. And even Moody's, this is 2012, even Moody's says, yeah, solar and wind are going to, to push thermal generators out. This is showing that Ptolemaeus V is probably going to be um, a stranded asset before it's finished. Something important to see here in Greece, I think. Um, and on the Greek islands, you are now, you are now uh, spending a lot of money in supporting the electricity production. You could also have a production locally that is much cheaper and give, as, as uh, Günther Pauli said, you, you can tell the government, we don't need the support anymore. We can do it by ourselves. When you let us go, we can do it and we produce at a lower price than what you can have, uh, what we used to have. How does it work? Um, you, you can combine, and this is what, what's happening in the north of Denmark. It's not completely what you, you could do here in, in, here in Greece. What they, did, what they used to do was use wind and solar for electricity on, only, and then use either coal or biomass to produce uh, together uh, electricity and heat. By now, what they are doing is using uh, solar and wind for uh, electricity production. But at times when solar and wind are in excess, they use it for produ pro production of elect uh, for hot water and inject that in, a, in the district heating system. So they absorb the excess electricity and make something useful with that. This is how in Germany they have been studying. Uh, one of the arguments is, yeah, but there's an unbalance because we are producing at, at times when there's sun and wind. This is how, how in Germany the picture could, what, what it could look like when on, on an annual basis we look what is producing uh, when and wha what is consuming when. And you see that it's getting into balance for a whole year. That's what the study did. And actually the link is a, a video of how that worked. There are villages by now, um, Günther Pauli also talked about that, who make a complete set of, of uh, renewable energy-based uh, pr production, including local uh, biomass fuels. This is a, an example in, in, uh, of a sustainable energy system in Austria. To, in, in 2000, they had 4,000 inhabitants and, and um, uh, purchased 6 million, million euros worth of fossil fuel. By 2012, they had created 1,000 jobs, attracted 50 businesses, and are now producing 13 million euros worth of renewable energy, local renewable energy. There is not even a wind turbine there. So you can do that also if an island says, I don't see a possibility for wind, there's other options. Um, the, the, sir, the municipalities, municipality service, uh, technical service is now promoting this worldwide. So there's possibilities too. And so on your islands, when you, when you build up a system, including uh, using uh, uh, waste flows for organic waste flows, you are solving your organic waste problem. And in the meantime, you are backing up your solar and wind. That's the kind of things you, you could be doing. Um, to start, to get started on an island and to get people uh, or, or in, a, in a municipality, to get people involved, we often uh, suggest start in a school. And you heard Günther Pauli say, you have to start with children. They, they back up uh, the, the ideas. This is an ex excellent way of involving parents and grandparents into a project. You start in a school, you build up uh, you do some energy renovation, you start uh, reducing your consumption, you add a solar power plant, and you, you generate money for a cooperative of parents that can support that, that, uh, that uh, uh, project. So there's a, a place to get started if, if you want to start up and, and collect a group of people to work with. Um, and then there's Possible other things that's going on in, in Belgium and in Croatia now is that people are creating their, their people's bank or that you could create a, a green energy supplier which can uh, then um, work with people and, and link 
the, pr the local production of, P of PV or, or wind or, or renewable energy with the customers directly uh, without going to the, to the market. Um, this is about what I wanted to say. I have a number of, of uh, links in uh, the presentation, so you are going to, to have that presentation and you are going to be able to, to work with that uh, later on, find the links find some of the suggestions of projects that are already going on. That was what I wanted to tell you. I... Yeah, I saw it. Um, I think I think Karel is going to be the next to, um, to uh, present his, um, his uh, uh, presentation. Um, he's going to talk about the experiences of, of Rescope, of MISAIS and of uh, EcoPower, which is the biggest cooperative in, uh, in Europe, energy supplier and producer of renewable energy. Carl. As you, under, as you understood, uh, both from Dirk uh, Knaupen and also from uh, Günther Pauli, uh, extremely big possibilities are possible. But then I think that, Karel, uh, you are ready to, to speak now. And so let's see how a cooperative started, uh, what they have managed up to date, and how economies of scale can be created by the ones that they are doing the job right now. Okay, thank you very much. You will see in my presentation that Dirk and me, we work together quite, quite close. It's the same layout. Um, and uh, Dirk focused, let's say, on the general picture. I will focus on the, on the case EcoPower, which is a cooperative in, in Belgium, in the northern part of Belgium, Flanders. Flanders is a very populated uh, part of, of, uh, of Europe. We live six million people in a small piece of land. Uh, altogether, Belgium is, is 11 million, so comparable to Greece, but the country is much smaller. Um, okay, um, it's very strange. I heard some similar things um, in my background as from Günther Pauli. I started about 15 years ago in the renewable energy sector and for a researchers network, because maybe it was hidden a bit in the previous um, presentations, the fact that a lot is possible with renewable energy now is thanks to technological development. It, we can blame, let's say, the nuclear power plants and the, and the fossil fuel power plants, but 40 years ago, this option that we have now was not there because the technology was not ripe. So, but now it is there. So uh, I will just add on uh, to the previous presentations to, to convince you that we can do a lot now. Um, so as we started for researchers network, then really went back to the basis with EcoPower in Flanders, try to develop projects from scratch and, and uh, bring people together to invest in them. And now we see this example works. We want to bring it out to the rest of Europe and convince citizens all over Europe to do the same. And because we really think we're living in a time that opportunities are there. There is a shift, globally in fact even, but certainly in Europe, towards sustainable energy. Uh, in the energy sector, a lot of things are moving, and we have to realize as citizens that we'll, we will pay anyway. We will pay it anyway. We, we pay taxes. Um, governments will use that taxes to do things. Maybe not the things we want, we want them to do, but they use our money. We are consumers, we have to pay the invoice for, for the energy, for the fuel, for the car, for the electricity, for the heat. So this money is gone anyway, as, and there's a lot of money as previous speakers have, have shown in figures. And um, the money that we left have left over, we put on the bank, and you all know it doesn't bring anything now. So, but others um, will use that money to get things going, to invest and uh, create added value for themselves, it's better that we use that money to invest and create added value for ourselves and for the, uh, our other neighbors, for the other citizens around. 
So now about EcoPower, um, we combine, in fact, two functions. The, the most important function, and that's where we started as a cooperative, is to develop renewable, renewable energy projects. Develop means there's nothing, and you have to find out how you can have something. Do you, can you have a wind farm somewhere, or wind turbine, or solar PV panels, or um, energy production based on biomass? Whatever, there's nothing. You have to, to try to, to get something up and running. Uh, first, you need to be allowed to do that. You need to have the permissions of the people who own the ground, the permissions from the government to do that activity, this eco economic activity. So that's really develop a project up to the moment that you, you are ready to take an investment decision. You say, okay, I have all permissions, everybody agrees now. Uh, if I would have the money, I could invest, buy that equipment, have it installed, and have it started operate the, the equipment. So that's to develop. Of course, when you can take the decision, you must then also have the money to be able to, to pay your suppliers. So then you can find, say either you develop a project and then you sell it to somebody or a big company who has all the money, or you try to find the money yourself and you invest yourself. And that's exactly what cooperatives do. They find the money by asking many, many people. The typical example that we say is, uh, and that's about value all over Europe, one wind turbine, you need 1,000 people. So, but uh, talking about the wind turbine, um, the usual size now, maybe not on the islands, but on the mainland, two megawatt wind turbine, um, you're talking about 3 million euros altogether, the cost to have it uh, foundation, founded, have the foundation in the ground and have it built. So but with 1,000 uh, with 1,000 citizens, you're able to raise enough equity to finance such a wind turbine. So it's not too much, 1,000 people. Even in a little community, a little village, you have 1,000 families, so it's not too much. EcoPower started in, in 91, um, but it's just a few people. Um, it's only in the year 99 that we really got going because there was a first concrete wind project that could be um, realized. And then we invited men. Then you have a concrete project where you need investment, uh, where you need money to invest. And then many, many citizens were in, invited to, to join. And we ended up last year with close to 50,000 citizens from all over Flanders who have bought one or more shares in the cooperative EcoPower. It's about 1 million euro equity now the company. And we invested in all kinds of renewable energies, as you see, wind, PV, small hydro. Flanders is a plat pays. It's a flat country, so but we still have some small hydro. Um, very recently, we produced in a wood pellet factory. Maybe it's not so much known in Greece, uh, but I know there are plans also to produce, produce wood pellets in Greece because it's, it's a, a fuel, heating fuel for private people. And I think especially in Greece and also on the islands, you don't need like eight months heating for your house. It's maybe two or three months and it's not the same um, installed capacity, the power, you don't need a boiler of 20 or 25 kilowatts to heat your house, maybe a small one or just a, a stove. And then wood pellets are very convenient to avoid the use of fuel oil. And apparently, the, the context we have in Greece, um, they will use the wood that is waste from olive um, production, olive trees, to produce wood pellets. So that's very, very clever to use this weight to make a very, very valuable heating fuel for private persons instead of heating oil. So I'm very, very keen on following up that project, but I don't know the actual status. Also in Flanders, we, we invested in a, a real facility, a factory to produce those wood pellets because it's not some, something simple. It's, a simple. Um, it's an investment of 10 million euros. It's a big plant where you have big piles of uh, trees, stems lying, and they are used to produce the, the, pull, the pellets in order to be able to offer our shareholders this heating fuel. Another thing we started from the very beginning, 
uh, as we took, um, took some, some speed and had really some, some activities, is to support similar cooperatives uh, that contacted us to, for assistance. And that was typically then in southern Belgium, Wallonia, where we managed to support them and uh, get going with, uh, with wind farms. The other activity of EcoPower, and this is quite special, is that we also a supplier of electricity. And all, now also fuel, green heating fuel, like the pellets, as I mentioned, and it's all focused on the shareholder, on, on the member of the cooperative. So we do not supply to people who are not having at least one share. So it's like, instead of you, you have a house, or, and you said, okay, I want to produce part of my electricity, I put on PV panels, or I put on, uh, uh, and you produce your own electricity, you say, it's too difficult for me to do that. I just take 250 euros, that's one share, uh, one cooperative share, and I put it on the invoice on the bank account of EcoPower, that I remember, and I expect them to set up projects that produce electricity for me, and also to supply that electricity at home, using the system that is in that country origin, the, uh, the system that is illegally established as a supplier, you, you need to have a license from the government to be a supplier. So there are all kinds of rules. Bureaucracy comes in again. Um, yes, you have to go through all that. Hmm? So you need to have a license as a supplier. We did that effort because the shareholders at a certain moment, the members in the General Assembly, there were about 300 people, they told us now the market will be free in, in the Flemish part of Belgium, that was in 2003. Now we really expect you, board of EcoPower, to become a supplier because we want not only to produce green electricity with our, with our own investment, we want that electricity to be supplied at home with me. I want to close the circle. I don't want to bother doing something in my own house. I want, I just invested in the cooperative and I want the cooperative to supply also with electricity. And this appeared to be quite quite an important step because as a board of EcoPower, we said this is, this is really not, not what we want. It's a lot of administration, a lot of work to do all this because supplying is, a, is an administrative work. You have to count how much electricity you put on the net and how much you can take off and supply to all the people and make invoices. It's purely paperwork. But the, and then we said, we will restrict this only to shareholders to make it easier. And we have a very simple tariff to make it easy. The tariff is per, per kilowatt hour. If you don't use, consume any electricity, your invoice is zero. If you use 1,000, it's 1,000 times, it's a linear tariff. Because using this tariff, you encourage people to reduce their consumption. Um, because when there is a fixed part of your energy invoice, in, in energy bill, uh, it doesn't matter too much if you consume a bit more or a bit less, you have to pay this fixed part anyway. So we thought this is not a good idea. We have a linear tariff. So pe people are really encouraged to reduce their consumption and they see the effect on their invoice immediately. So this was a bit between a balance like making electricity um, or make it, uh, making it attractive for our shareholders to become a client for the supply of electricity and not to punish them with, it, with an expensive price on an annual base. The price per kilowatt hour is quite high, but on an annual base, our, our price is quite good because this fixed part is not there. And this it was, it turned out to be a good idea because many, many people joined, uh, wanted to become clients but to become client, they first have to buy at least one share. So they became shareholder. And then after some time, they understood what we were doing. And then we spoke, speaking to the neighbors and so on. And that's, that made the cooperative grow uh, until what we are now, 50,000 uh, families. Okay, you have been reading already, uh, Greenpeace and others, they like this, this idea. Um, and what is most important for us is that we see that it really works without spending any effort or money in promoting energy efficiency and blah, 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 and, and campaigns or whatever, we don't do anything, zero. 
We just put this tariff, which is linear and quite expensive per kilowatt hour, and this makes that people reduce their consumption. So over five years, but close to 40%. And many people also do invest themselves in the PV installation at home to produce electricity at home, because then it's worthwhile, because your, your, your consumption that you take from the net goes down very, uh, very drastically as soon as you have your PV system. And then what is left to pay is it's much lower. And with this tariff of eco power, it's much interest, more interesting to do so. So they do. <clears throat> the same applies with the wood pellets. Uh, it doesn't make sense to just replace your traditional boiler uh, with oil or gas with a pellet boiler. It doesn't make sense at all. Why not? Because with, you will consume too much pellets. You first need to make uh, investments in your house to reduce the demand for heating. So insulate well, double glazing, and so on. And this is a process that really takes years. I realized in, in Greece it's a very completely other story uh, than, than in Belgium or the north of Europe, where we have to heat a lot, uh, uh, yeah, um, more than, than uh, three-fourths three of your cost of energy is heating. It's not electricity. But uh, by doing so, people we are really, again, are encouraged to first invest in energy efficiency in their homes, and then they can replace their existing heating system by system heating on pellets, and then it makes sense. So there we effect effectively can uh, link the investment in renewables and investment in energy efficiency. So after 10 years, we realized that we, it really works well what we're doing. And then we, we got news from others all over Europe doing more or less the same. We got in contact. And, but of course, you don't have the, the financial means to, to start uh, traveling around, speaking with people all the time. No, we had to work every day to develop more projects, to do the supply of energy and so on, to communicate with our members. And thanks to a European uh, project, we managed to um, get some funding, allowing us to go on and talk. So during three years, we have been talking with those we identified in Europe doing more or less the same. And we find out that there are quite a lot. There are quite a lot of initiatives, over 2,000 of citizens all over Europe trying to do the same, have a similar idea, also always use the, the more or less the same concept. So this, this really brought us to creating um, a federation. Nika Power is one of the founders of this federation. Um, in order to get the things organized on a European level and to make sure that when people start that they, that they can build on the experience others had. And one of the basic principles that we ask uh, energy cooperatives or, or groups of people who want to do the same to, to follow is the, the principles of the International Corporate, Cooperative Alliance, ICI, ICA, um, to make sure that it's, like Derek mentioned, it's something, the activity should be between a public and private. It should not be private, but private profits going to one party and one, uh, one single entity controlling this cooperative. No, it should be always under the control of all citizens that decide to join. One person, one vote principle. And the company should always be owned by all these people jointly. And then also all the investments, all the activities made by the company, by the cooperative company, are owned by all the citizens jointly. Okay, that's a lot of uh, blah, blah. Let's say what we want to do. A, um, a reason why at the European level, they're very much interested in what energy cooperatives do is because of the money. It's very simple. They're very, they're very surprised that citizens manage to do this quite impressive investments in energy technology without uh, the traditional way of the big banks and uh, exactly. I find a lot of similarities in speech with, with uh, Gunther Pauli. 
you go a little bit behind, uh, besides the normal way of working. You don't, you don't get a slave to the bank. You, you find your way to do it without a bank. And um, <clears throat> the, we try now also to organize this financing issue a bit better. And first, of course, is already that you uh, collaborate uh, as an energy cooperative with local authorities, especially municipalities that, that are signed, that signed the confidence of mayors. But the other important things is that you try um, <clears throat> to bundle also to have a financial co cooperation, collaboration between uh, cooperatives that you, you can give each other loans, very simple and that makes it work very, very often. Also that you try to bundle your projects to, to, to make it one big investment and not only renewables, but also energy efficiency investments. And then with several uh, cooperatives together, you get investment volumes where you, it, makes, it becomes easier to get them financed. Very, very strange, but that's the way it is because then you can um, come to investment volumes where um, financial institutions like European Investment Bank and so on have really instruments available for this kind of investments. And this again, we, um, we, we proposed it on a, on a European level, as we then working with several uh, European, uh, several uh, energy cooperatives, West Coops all over Europe. We proposed a European proposal under the Horizon 2020 program, again, to finance this additional work which is really outside the normal work of the cooperative that you otherwise would not be able to do because we got some funding from the, this program really to to uh, elaborate on on this um, way of working together between between uh, cooperatives so then i end um, by saying that now everything is ready for any group of citizens especially here in greece uh, we heard it before, you have abundant resources in renewables. We should not focus only on energy, but hook in also water, employment. Uh, this is very true. I, I really had a kind of aha alertness here uh, this, when Gunther was, was speaking. So this, this is, you should just put it into practice in, in Greece. And through the Rescope network on the European level, um, you will find really um, people who have the same mindset and are ready to support you in your initiatives. I finish with this picture of the city of Eklo, uh, because this is uh, the city where EcoPower could realize its uh, first project. And it really has to be said that um, a collaboration with local uh, authorities really is a necessity. Um, it's not that they give you money. No, they, sh they should support your idea. Uh, and give, give you trust and time to realize what you want to do, instead of choosing for a traditional big player, big energy company. And the city of Eco, they decided to do so in, in, uh, in 98, uh, when they asked companies to develop wind farms, uh, uh, some wind turbines on their territory, and they chose for EcoPower. They had the courage and the vision to choose for, for EcoPower, which was a group of idiots just five people with an, an, an a company was established with no empl no employees uh, about seven or six thousand euro on the bank wanted to realize a wind project of four million euros while Electra Bell was proposing and so on so just it's the same as you might be here like PPC is doing everything and, and we cannot do anything we had the same feeling but like idiots we proposed anyway I had a plan, and then the city council, they decided to choose for us. They were quite courageous. So thank you for your attention. So, Karel, uh, we all like to, to thank you very much for sharing with us the fact that 50,000 people in Belgium, you have already created your own cooperative, you have your own energy, and uh, you are overfloating in terms of know-how, financial resources, and will to cooperate with us that uh, we are maybe in an embryonic uh, situation. But again, this uh, crisis uh, seems that has been a very good opportunity for us. 
and uh, I can confess that here we have two regions already participating. Uh, region of Creta is here, region of uh, Attica is here. We have more municipalities than what we had before, Kozani, we had Kefalonia, they are still here, we have Creta. Now we have also Thiva inside the room. We have also uh, Nikia inside the room. Please raise your hands uh, so that we see you, uh, that you are here. And definitely, Stella Givelu, talking about uh, and co-organizing today with us uh, here. Thank you, Stella. Uh, from the social uh, university. I would call it social engineering university, just to pass the, the word to Mr. Markatos, uh, ex-rector of uh, the DUA National Technical University, and his team and his professors that they are still in the room, to tell to the embryonic uh, efforts that the Greek cities or citizens directly like you have been until you became also the backing of the city, uh, that uh, indeed uh, you are not alone. I mean, you have all what is necessary and uh, it is only uh, the bad ourselves, or kakos eaftos mas, that we have to fight if we are going to do uh, anything better than what uh, we are doing so far. I understand that Den Denmark now wants to speak by Skype and uh, Sanso, the island that managed to, to have Dirk uh, they have to manage 100% their own energy, and so the island is flying uh, alone without necessarily needing connection with any other grid or any other conventional uh, fuels uh, we were using. And uh, when you are ready, uh, we can talk to Mr. Sorensen. So he is going to present to us uh, what happened in the island of uh, Samso in uh, Denmark. And uh, if he is not there yet, then a, a small introduction by Dirk. Uh, what is happening in Denmark, Dirk? Ah. They will tell us directly. So, um, hello. Ah, he's there. So, we are ready to listen to you. Who are you and why you want to talk to us? I'm from the Danish island of Samsø. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about an energy transformation from um, 1997 till today, about how this uh, community took on the challenge to be the Danish renewable energy island. Okay, we're going. Okay. You see, you see a nice picture now? Now we see a very nice uh, picture Good. island in a graphic uh, way, and now we see, yes, the sea uh, with your boats, what you see, Good. I suppose. All right, so Perfect. you had it till now. That, that, that the island is, a, is like any, any island, very beautiful, and we try to keep it like very beautiful. Because this is also what tourists want to do. They want to come to this island to enjoy the landscape and the nature and all the things here. So you can say energy transformation is also a cri critical point where people fear the change because they see a lot of wind turbines, they see a lot of changes in the landscape. And therefore, there's a lot of opposition in the local community towards this because the tourist industry is important for us. We have addressed this also saying that, of course, we will not put wind turbines in the landscape. You can see from here, this is a landscape with the wind turbines inside it. And you can look carefully, you cannot see any wind turbines. And still, we are self-supplied well by, by wind power. Did you see the next picture now with a very, very red sky? Yes, yes. And some wind turbines. You can see in the background, there's some fume coming up. Uh, just left to the to the wind turbine on the right right hand side of the picture. This is from the power plant on the mainland. This is about 15 kilometers away from the island, and you can see this is a coal-fired power plant, and they are releasing quite a lot of pollution from the power plant. And and we have said to people on Samsø, maybe we should look at the wind turbines as ventilators. That is ventilating the smoke from the power plant away from the island. So we can actually use them also a little bit humoristic sense and, and we, we can make a laugh because we are doing better than this. We, we try to avoid pollution by having wind turbines. Do you get my point? Yes. So so this is, this is the offshore wind turbines. When we erected these turbines, they were the biggest offshore wind turbines in the world. It's, this is in, in 2003. Now there's been established some really, I mean, much, much bigger. But this was a very great effort from the island to do this. We had to make a lot of big bank loans. We had to call everybody to, to the bank to, to sign contracts to make, make ourselves able to pay for this, because this is entirely owned by the, the local community. The local municipality or the local government, in your case, maybe owns five out of 10, and the rest is owned by investment groups 
or co-op uh, ownership group CLO. And this is of course also one of the keys to success that we invite people to be part owners of the project. We use proven technology, as you also know it in Greece. We have a lot of solar thermal for hot water. Even in Denmark, where, where, where sunshine is not that frequent, we have in the summertime uh, not such a, a great heat demand for space heating, but we have heat demand for showers and hot water. So therefore, we have included a big community solar panels that is producing uh, hot water for all the houses in the neighborhood, which is producing about 25% of the yearly heat consumption of the island. So solar is playing, still playing, even being so very much in the north, quite a significant role in the energy mix. We tap energy out of the biomass straw from farms. It's a valuable product also instead of imported fuels. So we have created a local business where we buy the fuel from the local farmers and they, they, that's making them, them happy uh, instead of the imported fuels. And we are getting cheaper energy. The, the cost of one uh, kilowatt from straw is about one eighth of the oil price. So it costs like less than uh, the, uh, much less than oil. So this revenue or this cost difference is paying for the installation. So this is a little bit more philosophical. What means, what, what does it mean to, to, be, to, to be sustainable or to, to sustainability? What does that actually mean? Well, I, I, I kind of pray that sustain, to sustain things is that you can keep things in order. You can keep your energy circle, you can keep your circular economy and you have to be able to do it so, so to sustain things and to be able to do it is a practical thing. I think island people are very good at making practical solutions for this and to be able to sustain things and keep the ability of doing it instead of just calling somebody to administrate it for you. Which means that you have to define yourself. Who are you? Uh, there's a tendency that people on islands are very proud people. They like their life on the islands, but they are also very sad about the situation because the children are moving away. There's a lack of jobs on the island because there's no big industry that wants to, to establish themselves on the island. So if you define yourself as a poor islander that cannot do anything because it's so sad all everything, then I think it's too pessimistic. I think you need to define yourself as, as your own master and you are able to do things and make your own plans. So this is my island. Do you see a map of, of, of uh, a Google map now? Yes. So this is my island. It's about 30 kilometers long. And from north to south, there's actually two different communities. So if you, if you see the little patch on the north, this is a northern community where they speak a different dialect. And then you have a nature area in the middle where there's a lot of little islands and a very shallow area uh, where we have migrating birds. This is a nature protected area. Uh, international protection scheme is there and nothing is going on. There's no houses, nobody is living there. And we, pre we, we, pre we think it's a very precious area. We like it very much. In the South Island, we have all the farming and uh, the farming community. And this is also where we have the wind turbines and the energy installations. Also on our island, we think that the people in the north are a little bit strange. Um, uh, the the, the civil, civil, uh, civilized, say civilized island is the south and, and people in the north are a little bit crazy. And I, I think that is also the thing in, in, in Greece and other places that people who live in other places and where we come from are not really like us. I don't know if that is true. You, you, you can think about that. The audience says, yes, it is. <laughs> we always we also think that we are the right people and the other ones are a little bit uh, different. But just for your own identification, uh, this is Denmark. And if you make a perf perfect circle around Denmark, you can see Samsø, my island, is right in the min middle. So we are the center of Denmark. Up to the right, you have Sweden, and below Denmark, you have Germany. But you can see this perfect map of Denmark. Samsø is right in the middle. You agree? They say yes. Okay. So this is Europe, the European Union. And you see, maybe this map is maybe a little bit optimistic seen for my place, but Samsung is right in the sense of Europe too. Do you agree? <laughs> well, you talk to, to Greece, so you don't ask <laughs> twice. <laughs> maybe you should make your own sense, but, but now I'm going to prove that Samsung is also the sense of the earth. <laughs> So maybe, maybe, maybe this is a, this is a wrong scene from your perspective, and this is ex exactly where I want to address this. That I think that everybody, also the Greek islands, are right in the center of, of Earth, and we are definitely in the center of our own decision. And the next uh, smart step or the next intelligent, intelligent move is going to happen from your own backyard. And I think that the global, the whole global awareness about climate change and the other things is, of course, interesting. 
uh, seen from from a, a very big perspective, but it doesn't really matter for the local and daily life of, of a Greek island or a Danish island. We have to look at the perspective seen from our uh, our uh, doorstep, and I think that is very important in the thinking that we don't believe that the world will come to us. We need to address our own uh, plan and our own dairy. So this is the local people. You can see that they probably don't look very Greek, but they look very Danish and they are a little bit age also. They are plus 50 somehow. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the one on the right hand side. I'm pr probably the youngest in the group also. But this is typical island people who are making decisions because the younger people are, are going to cities to, to go to university and study. So we need to be able to make decisions here also. But I think these, these are smart people and they have a good life here. When you, when you do this, it's important also to remember that a self-organizing society needs to meet a lot. We have a lot of meetings where we sit down and talk about things. We have a huge responsibility for things to happen. Very little support because the central administration in Athens or in our case in Copenhagen doesn't really pay so much attention to the daily life of island communities. We have a declining number of members of society because people are getting older and they die off and we don't, there's not a lot of birth, the birth rate is not so high. We have a great possibility to be a leader because we need badly leaders in the local community and promotion of your own ideas. It's very important that ideas come from your own, uh, your own background and you have to also accept that you have limited resources to do it. And, and still, we, I think we have a chance of getting somewhere because we can define common ground but from very different reasons. Uh, different reasons could be that you have tourist industry in one case, you have to, you have uh, incoming tourists who wants to see the island as it was 100 years ago, and you have local people who want to see some development, some some business. But the common ground is kind of, we, we all need this island or this particular society or community to stay alive because that's why we are here. This is because it's a living community and not a museum. Then we also need to identify what we are restricted by. I mean, we cannot do anything on islands. We can only do do limited things because we, we don't have access to all resources and we don't have access to all the details of a modern community. But we, we can express what we need. And I think in many cases, if we do that in a, with a common voice, then we actually also sometimes get what we need. So we need to have a vision, a dream about the future and to be able to express this dream so clearly that people understand that this is what we are, this is what we dream about and this is where we want to go in the future. We need to, to kind of uh, light the little fire, the little fire of new innovation and new ideas and gather people around this fire place so we can sit down and talk about what is actually the objectives of the life we, we want to have here seen from a local perspective. I know there's a lot of consultants and a lot of people from outside who want to come and tell us what to do and what not to do. But I think it's very important that if you want them on board this project, you know, you need to invite them into this circle so they'll sit with you and be responsible with you also. So they be they will, will be part of the community and not some external experts who are, who is telling you what to do and what not to do. And this myth, we also say we need to find the blacksmith. Because you can say that the myth in the old days, the blacksmith was the smart guy. He knew how to bend steels and he knew a lot of uh, very, uh, what do you call it, difficult things and how to handle it. And you needed to call him if you had a problem you needed to solve. So the symbol of the blacksmith is who do you want to call today to get some solutions and some answers? And then the system is, is I mean, a modern system of today can actually do things uh, we have smart grids and we have uh, smart energy systems that can operate and do things also in in a local context. So 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 it's not so simple and 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 what you call restricted as it, it was in the old days. We can also use modern technologies on the islands and and kind of leapfrog or frog leap the the, the development patterns that they have done on the mainland. We can go straight from a very old paradigm to a new paradigm. And then we have to give up the, the idea that there's a headquarter somewhere uh, that, that is either the solution of a problem or sometimes also the, the, the restriction of the problem. And inside the headquarter, there's still people like us who is working on the daily jobs here. And they also want to be gathered around the fireplace and then we can start making networks. You have to identify who you need to be in this network to be able to cooperate in the future and find ways to, to get your hands on, on the development tools that you need for, for your uh, project development. You can't do it alone and you have to have a, 
a good network of friends and relatives and cooperative partners to be able to do this. And you have to work on this network very hard to identify who is the core people of, of this business. So again, back to the commodities, that equals biodiversity plus people. Biodiversity in this context means that we are a, a structure of people that creates the social life of an island. This is the biodiversity. We are not. We are more than just our own kind. There's many different points of view, and there's many different people here, and this is also commodity. Then the, the last point is to say that it's all about bread and butter. Actually, it's it's about having a good life. So you have time to sit down and have a coffee with your friends, and 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 be able to feed your family and and have a good life. So if we can do that by producing own energy and by changing from imported uh, fuels where you don't have a saying to the local fuels where you have a saying in the in the production, then this might be interesting for more people. And then you need somebody like me, kind of a guy that uh, who who wants to to do this. Uh, kind of one of one of these persons who can't help uh, working with energy trans transformation, and I think you have these uh, these key persons. They are, you can always find them on islands. These originals who who can't help it and who wants to do things and change the world, and you have to help them a little bit and nurse them so so they don't lose uh, lose their well, confidence in, in in the development because in the future they will be your helpers. So this was this was a little pitch from from my island, and I hope you 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 liked it and you understood and i'm sorry for the little technical uh, uh, startup you can see more at the energyacademy.dk the website in the bottom there's both video links and links to press material because we've had a lot of international press and i even think you can find greek uh, press material also at the website so thank you for me and um, hope you have a good conference and i'm ready if there's any questions that's fine also so uh because uh, we cannot keep you all the time online, I would like to ask the audience if there is any question or any remark about the work that is being done right now in, so in uh, uh, Samso in, uh, in Denmark, then uh, you have the floor now, while for the rest of the speakers you will have later possibility to discuss with them. Is there anything that we would like to ask uh, Soren or we would like to say to him? Until you maybe think of something, what I can tell you, Soren, is that finally, even the small difficulties on uh, the technical uh, part, it passed very well. We heard very, very well what you said. I Thank can you. Uh, inform you that uh, here they are feeling commodities now. Uh, the good. only thing uh, that uh, we cannot uh, feel is to have you with us and to have you in the island of Kefalonia, that is in front of me, of Creta, uh, that is in front of me. I mean, the people are, are here. Uh, Sifnos, that is uh, here uh, already. These are the embryonic, uh, let's say, uh, efforts that we have already around uh, us. And uh, several others that I think that they are getting courage now. Like I'm receiving the messages, they watch you right now in Sicily. Uh, Nino Paterno is there. He's telling me that uh, they want, they would like also to to, to invite you. Uh, also from Moldova, Nikolai is there. He's just reporting that uh, mainland Moldova uh, would like to to, to have more of uh, more of this. And if there is no uh, question for you, then uh, we would like to thank you very much. You can still watch it uh, through the streaming uh, online. Are you connected? Uh, through that, in case any of your colleague or you, you would like to, to, to continue. So for us, from us, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Come you on, are welcome. You're welcome and, and, and I enjoy your, the rest of the conference and say hello to the Greek people. We, I, I'm, I'm a frequent visitor of the Greek islands. I, I like you very much. So I hope, I hope the best and um, yeah, have, a, have a good day. Yes, this is what they, they like you also very much. This is what they tell me from uh, from here. <laughs> and so make uh, make sure. When are you coming next for Easter, baby? <laughs> okay. No, not this time. I'm going to another place in Easter time. But okay, hopefully so, soon. Let us know. Everybody here will know that you arrived in uh, Greece, and then you are going to to have repeated invitations like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. But, so good. thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Now, if we are ready, uh, let's talk about money. Let's talk about crowdfunding. Let's see how uh, Goran Yeras uh, managed to, to organize the Ethical Bank in Croatia, something that uh, also here uh, we have started already 
with a, with a crowdfunding. I know that the time is just, you know, overfloating uh, from our discussion. After this uh, talk, then uh, we will have also Vanessa from uh, Remida project uh, to, to, to give us uh, an input. Uh, is Goran there or Vanessa should uh, proceed? Goran is ready. And so, Dirk, you think that the, we have enough uh, money in our pockets or the, the, the bill, what we paid in the electricity, if we calculate how much all of us we pay per month in here, is enough capital to, to, to liberate us from the energy burden, you say? Yes. Yes, that's, uh, that's mainly what I was telling uh, the people on Sifnos. That's where I'm, I have been working in the frame of a European project. We had Sifnos as a pilot. Um, and so we have been discussing the, the opportunities. Um, I did also some calculations for the other islands on the, on the, in, in Greece. And there you can, uh, what as Günther Pauli said about uh, El Hierro, you can uh, let go of the subsidies that you get now from the mainland on, on the islands. Um, and that means that it's also going to be a lot cheaper on the, on the mainland to produce energy. And in here in Greece, with the sun you have and with the wind you have, you can produce at below the cost of what you are being are paying um, right now. For instance, for the the lignite production, it's uh, it's still uh, cheaper to produce with uh, renewables like wind and sun. Very good. So Goran is. Uh ready there i hope that we are yes goran welcome hello hello can you hear me very well very well actually okay i'm turning on the video now as well so ah, and also you can young, see me too a young nice man also yes yeah, so we see that <laughs> okay Okay, so uh, you are ready? Should I start or...? Uh... Yes, yes, yes. Actually, we are here from the academia, from the private sector, from the local government. All of us, uh, we feel equal. Uh, we are all citizens and we would like to hear what's happening in Croatia when it comes to f financing our endeavor to uh, decrease energy cost for our houses and for our families. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you for uh, for calling me. Uh, uh, hello to everyone uh, listening to me. Uh, I'm really sorry that I couldn't be in Athens uh, today together with you. Uh, I was uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I had also made some other plans uh, to uh, visit and um, make some other meetings, uh, but unfortunately, uh, some very important meeting meeting of our cooperative emerged this afternoon, so I need to attend it, uh, and that's why I needed to skip the Athens. Uh, I will try to be uh, as brief as possible uh, to uh, tell you about the main points uh, of uh, the new uh, financing initiative that is uh, happening in Croatia, uh, which is trying to promote uh, models uh, and opportunities for solidarity economy. Uh, so uh, the organization uh, I'm coming from uh, is uh, called uh, cooperative for ethical financing uh, and we are working on a project called eBank. Uh, so uh, our cooperative uh, is basically cooperative which is gathering uh, all the different actors of the Croatian society. Uh, we have individual citizens in there, uh, we have also NGOs, so non-governmental organizations, uh, we have uh, cooperatives, other cooperative and cooperative associations, uh, we have uh, uh, workers' unions uh, in it. Uh, we have also companies, usually small uh, and uh, medium companies, which are also doing something related to the to the social economy. And finally, we have uh, we have municipalities and uh, all of those sectors. Uh, and we are uh, we were in the time uh, of founding, and that was in April last year. Uh, the largest cooperative by the number of uh, founders of the, of the initial members in Croatia. Uh, we all gathered together to uh, uh, found and to work on a project of formation of uh, eBank. And eBank is supposed to be an ethical bank which works on the principles of ethical banking as they are defined by FEBA, that's the European Federation of Ethical Alternative Banks. And uh, it should be the first uh, such a bank uh, in Croatia. So uh, 
there are some legal things uh, for example in creation according to creation law there are no cooperative banks so uh, we are not allowed to be a bank as a cooperative and the, uh, to to fight that and still to uh, share and keep the cooperative values that we adhere to uh, we decided to uh, have a cooperative that will be 100% shareholder uh, owner of the of the bank because otherwise we won't be able to uh, get the banking license uh, from from the national regulator uh, what uh, our cooperative uh, uh, and the future bank will do so so we are not bank yet we expect to get the license uh, in the second half of this year uh, but with, uh, what we plan we plan to focus to something which is uh, uh, actually nobody focusing to in croatia and that's uh, uh, sustainable ecological agriculture, that's uh, uh, manufacturing uh, of uh, equipment for this agriculture, especially if it is combined with, with the green and renewable energy. And this green and renewable energy also not owned by um, investors, uh, company, investment funds and those kind of guys, but uh, 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 owned by, by uh, energy cooperatives, so citizens uh, uh, involved uh, in uh, uh, the uh, owning of, uh, of, of the sources of clean and green energy. Uh, then we are we are willing to focus to the IT services and the technologies and the social innovations and other innovations that could help uh, everything we are doing uh, being more uh, more efficient uh, and uh, uh, more uh, accessible to, to to the citizens. Uh, ecological projects and of course projects of uh, social entrepreneurship, which is uh, uh, now in a quite uh, rapid development uh, in Croatia. Uh, in our philosophy, uh, we want to uh, position bank a little bit differently than uh, other uh, other banks are doing, even cooperative banks. Sometimes uh, we uh, want to see a bank uh, as a, a service to the real economy, because according to our view, uh, banking itself is not uh, adding any uh, extra value uh, to uh, to the economy. It it just needs to be a service, a facilitator, uh, which helps the real entities which are creating, producing something, uh, to do it uh, on a best possible terms, also from financial perspective. So we see a bank uh, just as a service and not as an entity that is uh, independent and that is only uh, looking for its profit, uh, regardless of the uh, investments and the effects that it is with its policy uh, policy doing uh, if you look to the map uh, just uh, briefly uh, we uh, we already have uh, uh, members of our cooperative in most of the Croatia uh, this map is a little bit outdated it is from uh, uh, the, the December last year so in the three months we have uh, uh, about two dozen extra dots uh, in here uh, so uh, in, in less than a year we managed to cover the whole uh, the whole country uh, which is also uh, very important is that we are not going to follow the model uh, with uh, classical offices and classical branches that we are going to set up but our cooperative members which could be municipalities development agencies uh, incubators companies cooperatives if they have uh, uh, space, physical space, buildings and willingness to uh, uh, to participate, uh, they, they could uh, uh, go through to, for, for education in our cooperative and uh, uh, they will get the license and they would uh, they, they could serve as uh, virtual branches of our bank. So uh, there, there will be no cash uh, uh, business uh, because other, for that we will need to have investment in the security of each of those buildings. But all uh, major uh, information the gathering of documents, uh, information about the products and services, uh, opening of account, uh, transactions, all those uh, non-cash uh, non things uh, would be uh, uh, available to you know, in all those branches. And uh, that's how we had, uh, with uh, almost no invested money, uh, managed to have uh, 36 of uh, such organizations uh, already in place and many more uh, waiting for, uh, for, for education uh, uh, by our cooperative. Uh, if you look uh, why we uh, think uh, uh, that banks are very, very important to the society, uh, not only uh, because uh, uh, they, 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 they are uh, uh, very rich financial institutions, but because uh, basically when we look to what banks are doing, 
uh, they basically keep the deposits and the money of people. So uh, the money that banks are uh, using is not uh, some uh, money of some, I don't know, rich uh, individuals from all around the world, but it is the money of us, of, of uh, ordinary people. And uh, uh, basically with this money, with our money, banks uh, decide uh, uh, the direction of the economic development with their uh, credit policies they decide if agriculture will be developed or not uh, uh, with their uh, loan giving policies uh, uh, to to the consumption part of the economy they would decide that uh, uh, we are going to uh, go into uh, debt and not uh, in the producing part of the economy so basically the role of the bank is very important and that's uh, why uh, we decided to uh, set up a bank that would take uh, uh, in, consider in consideration uh, this knowledge that it is basically the most important uh, uh, tool to uh, develop and direct our economy, even more important than the government itself, because the government is also borrowing money from banks, so it is not really that... Uh, uh, a government in the full uh, uh, in, in in the full context and the full meaning of that word could control or and oversight the banks. There is a much uh, more uh, uh, power on the bank side than it is usually thought. So that's why we decided that uh, uh, basically uh, we need to have a bank which is owned by uh, people by its customers which is tied and which is looking to the uh, benefit and the uh, uh, best interest of the development of local communities. And uh, in our vision, that should be a, a position a position of the Bank of the Society. And that's why we are uh, employing uh, this, uh, this kind of a model. Uh, now on very specific uh, things, so what we are uh, envisioning with our business plan to do, uh, we want to have a bank which uh, uh, is of course service to the community which i said already uh, several times but which also has a cooperative in the background uh, which is able to uh, support uh, uh, the projects that uh, a bank is investing in so it is uh, the real solidarity uh, integrated in our uh, our business models when we get uh, a project a new project that is applying for funding uh, we are not only looking to the financial side of it, but we are also looking to all uh, possible risks and the things that the project uh, uh, carries with itself. And uh, we are not, uh, as uh, other banks, just saying, okay, this may be too risky because uh, it doesn't have a distribution chain or it doesn't have a good uh, corporate structure or a good project manager or uh, good expertise in, in something which is important for the project. But we say, okay, uh, we see that all those things are missing, but maybe within our cooperative, we have uh, people with uh, uh, just... Uh, experience, knowledge, capacity, which is uh, lacking in this specific project. So if we make those two uh, projects uh, or companies uh, collaborate with each other, then we would reduce risks. Okay? Uh, we would help this uh, Goran, we don't in, get uh, uh, full uh, full uh, understanding of what you say. There's um, internet uh, difficulty, or okay, uh, for for me, to me, it sounds okay. I, I hope that it no, it's is perfect. Not, uh, my side, you, you, uh, what, what is the last thing uh, that you heard? Uh, where, where you have lost? Just it? go one paragraph back. Okay. Uh, paragraph back so uh, basically uh, the side with the title e-bank model and values or uh, the uh, previous one with banks no 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 just uh, just uh, oh, just, just a paragraph the capacity e matching of uh, e-bank i think it was wasn't it yes. that we lost him okay i i, I will just uh, summarize the last uh, few sentences that i said uh, so uh, I, I said that uh, according to, to our vision and our business model of a bank, uh, we uh, see uh, uh, very good this synergy of the uh, offering banking services and uh, uh, the strength of the co uh, cooperative, which has many uh, different sectors uh, uh, working together in it. Uh, how, how I mean that? I mean that we are as a bank, when, when we as a bank get a, a new project, uh, then we are also look uh, uh, what is the, of course, the, what are the business risks of the project. 
they decided we see that uh, this project is uh, 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 lacking uh, some capacity. Uh, for example, it doesn't have good uh, distribution chain or it doesn't have uh, knowledge about uh, project management or something like that. Then we are looking to uh, the our cooperative members who have that capacity or who can help uh, uh, the new project. Uh, we, we look how to connect them together and with this we uh, achieve three uh, beneficial things. We uh, help a project uh, uh, in order to uh, have more uh, more chance to succeed. Uh, we uh, help the guy who is helping this project to, to uh, get extra business because he, he is uh, supporting uh, it. And on the third side, we get uh, we reduce risks for our bank because we know that uh, something that we have perceived as a risk during our analysis is now covered with this extra capacity of the uh, of the cooperative member. And uh, uh, by that, we are able to uh, individually approach any uh, customer. Uh, we are developing IT system which is designed uh, exactly to do that for, for this risk management and risk, money, uh, uh, risk mitigation. And uh, with that, we, are, we would be able, according to our business plan, uh, to offer much cheaper, uh, cheaper uh, interest rates, uh, so much uh, cheaper uh, financing, uh, to uh, productively oriented projects than uh, any other competitor uh, in, in in Croatia, uh, and then finally to to remind you as a bank, we because we see bank as a uh, uh, as a, uh, a service to the to the economy, to the real economy, and to the local communities. Uh, then we don't have any pressure for a bank itself to uh, have uh, and gain extra profit. Uh, so we, we could basically run a bank uh, as a not-for-profit entity, which uh, uh, at least 90% or even 100% of its profit reinvests back to the community and to the uh, expansion and uh, improvement of, uh, of their, uh, their, their services. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, by uh, by uh, transaction policy, with the policy of the bank, with the uh, loan uh, giving policy, uh, uh, we are uh, trying to make incentive to people to work together as much as possible, the, the members of the cooperative, and to form as much as possible closed economic system where majority of transactions will be uh, within the cooperative. Uh, just maybe to name a few examples uh, of the innovative approach that we are trying to integrate in our model. For example, uh, you probably have heard of, about the crowdfunding platforms where people are directly investing to the projects that they, uh, they want to. Uh, and maybe you have heard for peer-to-peer -peer lending where also uh, people are using social networks to uh, make loans to each other without the intermediary of the bank. Uh, we, as an ethical bank, we uh, this don't see as a, uh, as a competition. We see it as a, as a feature, actually, as something that we could offer as a part of our banking proposition to our cooperative members and our customers and uh, uh, allow them to invest directly in the projects that we, as a bank, would be also uh, investing and in, uh, giving loans to. And with this, uh, uh, with this system, uh, we are basically, sh as a bank, sharing risks with our own customers and cooperative members uh, and having a much better financial position, according to the national regulator, uh, than uh, if uh, the whole risk would be only uh, on a bank uh, as, a, as entity. So uh, that's something which uh, uh, works very, very well in the, uh, in the cooperative, where is uh, the level of trust uh, high, uh, high among people. Uh, also, uh, which is very important, uh, is that uh, we are looking to the uh, uh, innovative models to support uh, local communities. Uh, this is something which uh, other ethical banks in Europe are also uh, are quite much involved. Uh, for example, uh, there are many examples when, uh, where, where ethical banks are supporting introduction of local currencies uh, in, in local communities. Uh, and they have, of course, a bank infrastructure that could facilitate the process and make it much easier than it would be without banks. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the extra benefit of this uh, introduction of local currencies is also uh, closing the economic system to uh, uh, on, on the community level, uh, making people sure that the local currency can, cannot ex escape uh, their their uh, local territory. And with this, uh, you uh, usually see the uh, increase in the frequency of circulation of uh, of this local currency, which then leads to uh, more products, more services, uh, more. Uh, 
uh, uh, more, more, more uh, business activity, which then benefits, uh, benefits the local community. There are many examples around the world, I believe even in Greece, uh, we, where, uh, uh, where, where, where local currencies have made a huge benefit for, for local communities. And finally, uh, maybe most related to the energy, uh, to see that uh, uh, we as a, uh, as a as a bank uh, maybe you have noticed before we said that uh, we do not uh, uh, want to pay any interest rate uh, for deposits of, uh, of clients in our bank uh, why uh, because we believe that the money which is just uh, staying on the uh, on the accounts of people is not productive uh, that we as a bank should uh, uh, just keep it and save it uh, but not uh, uh, invest it uh, without the knowledge of the people but for people that have some money and want to invest it in something which is uh, they don't have their own idea they don't uh, have uh, any uh, willingness to invest in their uh, own new business or something uh, we would offer them a possibility to invest in uh, things uh, uh, which are very low risk and which are giving them uh, something in return for example uh, we would offer the savings through investment in the wind en wind energy so you you could uh, invest your uh, money in the, in the, into the wind park or the solar power park uh, or to the organic agriculture so we as a bank would offer those kinds of uh, low risk investments where we as a bank could also maybe give guarantees to some extent uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, the most important is that we would motivate people uh, to uh, think actively about uh, uh, their uh, uh, their money and what is the most, most useful and the most beneficial way for them but also for the community and for, for, for the environment uh, to uh, do with this money and uh, the positive homes uh, is uh, some uh, some uh, project idea of ours where members of our cooperative are working for a quite long time already uh, where uh, we want to uh, offer uh, uh, some special kind of the mortgages where we would be financing homes houses uh, with uh, uh, the maximum production of uh, renewable energy as possible. So this could be not only one house, it could be a small na small neighborhood where we would install uh, everything what is possible in this area to uh, produce uh, uh, electricity and the thermal energy, where we would use this thermal energy for the food production, uh, where we would have some uh, uh, overcapacitated systems for waste disposal and recycling. And with all those surpluses which the neighborhood has in terms of the energy and food and the uh, capacity for, for the waste disposal and recycling, maybe even water purification, we would like to uh, have uh, uh, this surplus uh, to the large extent or maybe even in some ideal situation completely repay uh, the price of the house. So if you look at it from the individual perspective, you could always make this cal calculation, of course, if you are uh, technological good enough to do that and uh, find a house that would repay itself in some period. But if you are offering it from the bank uh, side, so if you are thinking in this way as a bank, you basically could uh, give uh, houses to people for uh, free or very cheaply where uh, you would then expect them not to pay you back but to uh, supply you with uh, extra electricity extra uh, food uh, extra things that you could uh, uh, distribute through your cooperative and earn uh, earn money on that so so this is very controversial idea to some extent but uh, 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 our cooperative members are uh, trying to uh, uh, are making a models that would uh, be able to make them work we as a bank would be open to consider them and uh, in some some future of course uh, it could prove to be a model that uh, that is also sustainable and could be replicated even further so maybe just to, to conclusions uh, uh, and then uh, if there is time of course i'll be open to all your questions um, we need to have a, a investment tool which is uh, not only uh, looking to the financial return but has a, a clear social mission uh, uh, because uh, all uh, sustainable and develop development related uh, uh, projects uh, would always uh, have a, a problem with the tool uh, with, with the financial system which is not ready to be as sustainable and to support so sustainable uh, things uh, as uh, uh, as uh, 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 it would be possible with uh, with, with such a uh, with, with such a financial institution that is integrated uh, in uh, in the, this uh, uh, point of view. 
uh, we also need to have a fair measurement of impact uh, because uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh to to say and to, to proclaim something is doing good for the society something is uh, do, doing good for the environment if you're not ready uh, to to measure it and you don't have tools to to measure it it needs to rely on the long-term planning uh, not uh, not looking to the uh, just uh, short time uh, short time goals uh, and uh, of course uh, something like this maybe uh, couldn't be possible uh, in uh, uh, in the past, because uh, here, in order to make it possible, we rely uh, to uh, the great level of communication, to the uh, uh, to, to attracting and involving a lot of people from different areas, uh, different uh, with different knowledge, to work together on, uh, on on some goals. And this couldn't be possible with the use of uh, uh, present uh, present technology and uh, the IT system that are able to uh, to follow uh, follow that. Uh, and uh, the and finally, basically, uh, uh, what, what what we as a bank and as a system need need to focus on is to sustainability and not only uh, growth for the sake of growth, which is uh, maybe uh, making the whole system uh, much more uh, 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 much more fragile than uh, than, than the approach which is looking to the to the small entities and uh, a large number of small entities. And not uh, a few few large investments. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's my end. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I'm open to your, all your questions if there is still time. And I hope you have heard me <laughs> well and that uh, the internet was good enough. So yeah, thank you for your attention. Goran, I can tell you that uh, watching the audience here, everybody was uh, very very carefully listening to what you have been saying. <laughs> and while I ask them. If there is any question that they come to address it now, because you cannot stay on Skype all day, they're waiting for that. Uh, I can tell you uh, what I understood is that finally money is not the problem. Is yeah. that correct? Uh, yeah, actually, that, that's a, that's a very good question because people usually always think that uh, there it is money which is lacking uh, in, in everywhere in, in Croatia as well. When we said we are starting to uh, found the bank, uh, the first question that people uh, asked was, "Okay, where would you get the money for that?" And uh, according to Croatian law, uh, you uh, we would, you need to have five million euros to uh, to to found the bank at least. Uh, and what we did, uh, we just went uh, all over the Croatia. We were going uh, before we formed the cooperative. We uh, had about uh, 1500 uh, meetings with uh, really different people, different organizations, different companies all across Croatia. And uh, uh, almost all of them said, oh, that's a really brilliant idea. I would like to participate in something like that. Uh, I, I, I would be ready to invest some of my money to it. And uh, uh, within uh, uh, among those uh, th those members that we just attracted uh, uh, in in the first uh, two years of uh, really hard uh, field work, uh, we managed to, uh, uh, the, to to gain uh, ten million euros. So so it is ten million euros that is now available to fund the bank. But on the other side, this is ten million euros which are not very easily earned. The, 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 those are uh, uh, this is money which we are not using for any. Uh, operational uh, uh, costs of our project because we said, okay, this money is for foundation of a bank. Uh, you as a people has given it for it. We, we are not going to spend it on uh, for, for uh, things like uh, uh, which are not uh, uh, not directly uh, tied to the to the foundation of a bank. Uh, we will not use any of it before we get the license uh, from the national regulator for all other costs. Uh, we would do something else, for example, form a cooperative where you would uh, uh, give us uh, 330 euros of your membership fee. And uh, we will do uh, some projects, we will apply for e e European funding, uh, and that's how we will cover our operational costs. And when people see that uh, you are really doing all your best to uh, preserve their money, even you are completely transparent about the whole process, our cooperative members could see every transaction that we as a cooperative make. When they see that we are uh, modest uh, in, uh, in our standard of living, that we are also investing uh, extra time and energy to, to it, then you uh, create uh, some uh, uh, level of trust. And this trust is basically uh, bringing them the money. And uh, the, the, uh, if, if you have, there is no lack of money, there is lack of trust and lack of good ideas, at least to my experience. 
Okay, Goran, uh, the, the fact that you are not here is not uh, easy for us to, 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 to make the discussion. So uh, I will be there with the ERFC team in Pula, uh, May, and I'm saying this in public because I will have to explain afterwards. And now you are receiving an invitation from us because we are launching the Innovation Week in Corfu 21 uh, of September for a, for a week until 25. And so the audience here is invited and you are invited uh, as well, hopefully by the time to have already a business plan for a social project, for a social yeah. innovation project that covers more than one country. And so welcoming you into the European Union, we are here a little bit stuck. We were waiting for you, we we're waiting for you to, to, to go together forward, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm also looking forward for this uh, nice collaboration because I think uh, we are all uh, uh, in, in the same world. We all need, uh, we all have same needs and same problems. And uh, as much as we could, uh, if we collaborate, we are uh, stronger and we can make change uh, easier. So, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to it. And thank you very much for the invitation. I will book it immediately in my agenda, so next time I will be definitely physically present in Greece. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. This is yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, and so uh, continuing uh, our job here, Vanessa is already there to, to address uh, the, the conference. There is also a video of Remida that uh, we are going to share with you, uh, produced in Greece uh, this time, Vanessa. And uh, also, uh, there is a letter that I have to read to you because it's for you. It comes from the parliament, from the Greek parliament. And uh, the committee for research uh, would like to, to tell you something. So I ask Karel and Dirk to put their uh, earphones because that's going to be in Greek. So when they have it, I can start with this. Or Vanessa is ready to go before that. If you are there, then... Uh, the visitors uh, have always priority here until you become host uh, for, uh, for all of us from, uh, from Greece at that time, Vanessa. So, and after that, we are going to go for lunch and coffee together because uh, we used uh, that time to, to put the, the global uh, power uh, not only eco power uh, and on, not only energy power uh, in our disposition. And uh, now you are ready, Vanessa. So, Goran, if you want to follow, you follow via streaming. You have to go into the streaming possibility okay. that the National okay. Research Foundation is making available for us here today. And uh, you watch us from there because we are going to use that computer now for uh, Vanessa coming from Informest. Okay. from northern Italy to, okay. to speak. So could you please connect via streaming and still yeah, we yeah, are connected sure. via Skype if you have any contribution to make that uh, I can announce here. Okay, great. I'm switching to streaming. Thank you. Okay, thank you very Goodbye. much. So, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity and for the well and good organization of this uh, transnational and, and international meeting. I would like to bring also the greetings from uh, the Friuli Venezia Giulia region and from the province of Gorizia, who is leading this initiative. Uh, since now the project partners are doing many events uh, such as this one, they say to, to thank you for, for this important uh, initiative. So I'm not a technician. I will not give you an added value on, uh, on the items and on the topics that we have spoken today, but uh, I would like to uh, inform you on the project, uh, which also ERFC is a partner. Um, the project is called Remida. It's uh, financed by the MED program. Uh, we have uh, several partners from the Mediterranean areas, so Italy, Spain, Montenegro, uh, France, uh, Slovenia and Bosnia. Um, we are now working on pilot action because uh, for us it's very important to start to transfer the know-how that we have uh, shared during this month uh, together and to put the, in practice what we have learned. 
um, the pilot action are focused uh, on the establishment of uh, PPPP partnerships, and that it's uh, very, very challenging because it's, uh, it's new for us, it's a very new topic. So all the experts that are now supporting in, uh, in this path are very important because it's, uh, it's a new model, it's very challenging, and uh, so we are learning by doing. Remita project is a project that aims uh, to develop a strategic energy action plan in order to have uh, um, to use uh, renewable agency, uh, energies and also to use energy efficiencies. Uh, this was a new uh, theme for, uh, for the stakeholders and uh, for the institutions. So uh, we start to uh, analyze the partnership, uh, public partnership people model. And, um, as you see here, uh, why we have switched to the partnership uh, uh, public-private uh, uh, partnership model to the public-private private people uh, model, because uh, there was a, a top-down decision, so the decision was not shared by the citizens and by the people. And uh, also the European Union understood this, the importance of uh, uh, the introduction of a new P. So these, uh, the, the actors, the municipality, the developer, and the, and the end user uh, on the public partnership uh, model were just uh, the, the last uh, uh, receivers of, of, the, of the policies. With the 4P processes, we have an interactive process, we have a formal relation. With the Remida project, we have analyzed the six case studies and we saw that the uh, 4P model was much more effective. So that was selected also by relevance and by the sustainability of the, of the activities. So as you may see here, the, what we have uh, found was that uh, the, the, the 4P added value was an integration, was a new sharing of information and knowledge, was uh, also uh, conceived as in terms of a legitimacy, uh, sustainability of, of, of the things that we, of the decision that the, the public uh, municipalities uh, are going uh, to, to take. So uh, the people, uh, we understood that the people are very important, so it's not important to have money to have the things financed, but it's important to involve the people in our, in our decisions. Here were the success factors that we have uh, found out during uh, our analysis. So the importance of the process, the importance of the implementation. So the citizens uh, have uh, a, an active role on, uh, on, the, on the actions. Uh, they are not just the receivers, they are uh, the contributors. So the involvement of the people are the, valid, uh, uh, the, the, the value added that can uh, have uh, our, our action. And the institutional framework is very important to support it. So this is the way that we, we did and we decided to, 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 uh, to work together in the MIDA project. So a stakeholder analysis in order to involve the 4P, uh, the context analysis and the participatory strategy. So we started with a consultation, we did many workshops with, with the local stakeholder, we collected the idea and then we selected the, the feasible action. So now at this moment, all the MIDA partners, all the nine partners are now developing the action plan for a renewable agency, uh, uh, energy and uh, for, for putting in practice what we have learned for, from the 4P. But actually what, what you are just saying now, just to, to make it more interactive, it is in the folder what you got, there is, a, uh, there is a, a piece of paper asking you to become part of this dialogue. So this should not be the speakers that said and went. This is your advantage that you want to be integrated, you want to be communicated tomorrow, whether you are in the Ministry of the Interior responsible for Exconomo, or whether you are in the island, or whether you are in the Polytechnic School, that you have to inject these technologies that so many times you have been talking about, and we were not there, the people, to listen to you. 
Vanessa? Yeah, you're right. So this is the model that we have developed and we are putting in practice towards uh, a new way of uh, participating. And uh, we are also supporting the local community to, to sign the covenant of mayor that is for reducing uh, the use of, uh, of energy and, uh, and uh, to support the use of energy, renewable energies. And this was done through a participatory approach. So without the citizens, without the people interaction, we are nothing. This is what we have learned. This is all from my side. And something in addition, Vanessa, because what, what has to be very, very clear here, because also people planning structural funds are in this room here. And what they want to hear is that this is territorial cooperation project funded by ERDF, which is structural funds at territorial level. So it means that your model, the public-private people partnership, finally is part of structural funds. So far, in some cases, we were using structural funds to make a bridge in a, in a square or in a cycle or in a river. Sometimes we were rational. Now, we talk about structural funds that are, are, are from Spain to all over Mediterranean to Greece and are there to talk about models of people taking over the responsibility that should have taken a long time ago for energy cost reduction or abolition, what you said. So, back to this very, very important uh, thing, because uh, regional policies, I remind you, uh, the last envelope for Greece was 20 billion. The previous one was 40. And people were not there. Yeah, well, people are not uh, always very informed about okay. the opportunities uh, that the European Union uh, uh, gives to the citizen and to the institution. The institution usually have a very weak capacity of absorbing EU funds because everybody talks every day, European Union gives money, but it's not that it gives money. It, there is a, must be a, a, a plan, must be a, a concertation, must be a, a good partnership. So we are, uh, we, we have to, to understand and to, to to be more focused on the opportunities that the European Union gives to us for establishing uh, new projects, ideas, and new partnership. That is very important. Very good. Okay, if there is no question, I see that you are a bit uh, tired, you want to meet each other, we have to go uh, to provide for that. But before you went, I asked Yanis uh, to give us the video of Remida, so concluding the speech so to see what they have produced here in Greece uh, about this and see how this can be integrated further for the social cooperatives in, uh, in uh, Europe. While uh, I have to read for you the following letter from Vuleftis uh, Dodekanisu. Karel, your, uh, translates your interpretation is ready, so if you can put your earphones, then uh, you, uh, this is in Greek, so no going out. Ε, βουλευτής του Δεκανήσου Νεκτάριος Αντορινιός, Μητροπόλεως 1, Αθήνα προς ERFC, προς το Θόδωρο τον Πατσουλέ που είναι ο project manager σε αυτό το έργο προς όλους εσάς που είστε εδώ σήμερα Αθήνα 31 Τρίτου, χαιρετίζω τη σημερινή ημέρα έναρξης των εργασιών αυτής της διεθνούς ημερίδας με θέμα τη συμμετοχή των πολιτών σε προγράμματα εξοικονόμησης ενέργειας I'm going to fast, Πύρος Δυστυχώ, κοινοβουλευτικέ υποχρεώσει δεν μου επιτρέπουν να παρακολουθήσω τι πολύ ενδιαφέρουσε εισηγήσει και παρουσιάσει. Θεωρώ ότι ο τομέα ενέργεια προσφέρεται για έρευνα, πρωτοποριακέ δοκιμέ και νέα τεχνολογικά σχήματα ώστε να εξευρεθούν εναλλακτικέ πηγέ ή να μειωθεί το κόστο και οι αρνητικέ περιβαλλοντολικέ επιπτώσει των ήδη χρησιμοποιούμενων μορφών. Τέτοιε ιδέε και προγράμματα είναι ιδιαίτερα σημαντικά τόσο γιατί αλλάζουν το status quo στον ενεργειακό τομέα όσο και γιατί δίνεται μία διέξοδος για φιλικότερη στο περιβάλλον και φθηνότερη για τους καναλωτές ενέργεια. Ευχάριστο και ελπιδοφόρο είναι το γεγονός ότι με αφορμή αυτή την ημερίδα ανοίγει η συζήτηση της ενεργούς συμμετοχής των πολιτών μέσω και των προγραμμάτων και της περιοχής τους και να γίνονται ενσυνείδητα συμμέτοχοι στη μείωση του κόστους. Με την πρόσφατη ιδιότητά μου ως του Προέδρου της Μόνιμης Επιτροπής Έρευνας και Τεχνολογίας Βουλή. Θα ήθελα να τονίσω ότι χρειάζεται μια εκ νέου χάραξη εθνικής στρατηγικής τομής έρευνας και τεχνολογίας, 
ώστε στις σημερινές δύσκολες πολιτικές και οικονομικές συνθήκες όπου η παραγωγική ανασυγκρότηση του τόπου είναι επιτακτική ανάγκη, οι τομείς αυτοί μπορούν να, και πρέπει να παίξουν σημαντικό ρόλο στην κατεύθυνση αυτή. Κατεύθυνση αυτή. Για αυτούς τους λόγους οφείλουμε να είμαστε ανοιχτοί και να μελετάμε κάθε καινούργια ιδέα που μπορεί να εξυπηρετήσει τον άνθρωπο και την κοινωνική οικονομία. Σας εύχομαι καλή επιτυχία ο Πρόεδρος της Επιτροπής Έρευνας και Τεχνολογίας της Βουλής των Ελλήνων, ο κύριος Νεκτάριος Σαντορινιός. And so, if we can just uh, watch the video and uh, make our break. This is the Remida video produced by people here in Greece. For all of us and for the people watching us on the streaming, uh, 1.30 Greek time, we are going to be back uh, in this room with five minutes delay to start uh, the next, uh, the second session, where we are going to have the experiences of the Greek territories that started with...